plug, huh? All right. Let's take our seats. This meeting is called to order. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the City of Boynt Beach City Commission meeting. Today is Tuesday, February 6th, 2024, and the time is now 6 p.m. Before we proceed, I'd like to remind all those in attendance in person and online that the rules of civility and decorum will be enforced in accordance with our city's decorum ordinance. That means that officials must first be addressed by me, the chair of this meeting, and not interrupt any other speaker. Public comments must be addressed to the whole commission as a body and not to any particular individual on the dais or in the audience. Insults, personal attacks, and similar acts are strictly prohibited. Physical demonstrations like stamping of feet or yelling are strictly prohibited. We don't do yelling. Disruptive behaviors will receive a warning, and should disruptions persist, you may be asked to leave this meeting. And if you are asked to leave, you will not be readmitted. All right, I'm going to turn now to our Madam Clerk. If you could please begin the roll call. Mayor Penserga? Here. Vice Mayor Turkin? Present. Commissioner Cruz? Here. Commissioner Hay? Here. Commissioner Kelly? Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Maylee. <clears throat> Our invocation for this evening will be led by Pastor Bob Bender of Christ Fellowship Church here in Boyne Beach, and immediately followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by me. Let's all stand for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, I thank you for life. I thank you for the gift that we have of being here today, of being blessed in the way that you are moving in each of our lives. Where we pray, Lord, that you would give wisdom and discernment to this meeting, to the governance of this municipality. And we thank you, God, for the people that you have positioned and ask that you would continue to be able to strengthen them, encourage them, and fill them with your guidance. And Lord, as all the different complexities of caring for a municipality like this come together, may they have a unique insight and a unity of vision. And as a city, may Boynton Beach be known for its love and its kindness and its strength for one another. And may you continue to teach us how to love like you do, with an open heart and open hands to us. We love you and we praise you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Pastor Bob. We are now going to turn to agenda approval, additions, deletions, corrections to the agenda. Let me first turn to our legal counsel, uh, Ms. Lamb. Uh, you had mentioned there may have been a Scrivener's error in one of the items. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, there was a Scrivener's error on um, 7D in the uh, resolution, so we are striking uh, with A. Um, from the resolution, and that has been corrected and placed on the resolution 
in place of the erroneous resolution. All right, thank you. Did my colleagues have any questions about that item? Okay, I see no objections to that update. Uh, we're gonna turn now to Commissioner Kelly, if you have any additions, deletions, or corrections. No, Mayor, thank you. All right, thank you. Commissioner Hay? None for me. All right, Vice Mayor? I had a couple. I wanted to move up 9A to after 3D. We do have a, a lot of people in the audience here, so I think it'd be helpful regarding community standards to see that update since we typically don't have a lot of people in the audience. I think it would be helpful for the community. <clears throat> I'd also like to add on future agenda item discussion on infrastructure and um, specifically in the road paving. I know we've had a lot of road paving projects done in, you know, in the west side. We're getting started in the east side. And uh, it's been a big hit. And I know a lot of roads have been neglected for years and years. And so I want to look at what we can do as far as a budget amendment goes to uh, find the funds to look at our, our infrastructure because these roads are long overdue, uh, specifically Seacrest Estates, um, Southwest 8th. I know that there's a project there. And then obviously the Chapel Hill neighborhood, there's, there's a phase project. So I want to get that, um, I want to get that on the agenda because I think that's important for us to, uh, you know, do something about these neglected roads. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Oh, so I got one more thing, too. Sorry. Ahead. And then um, also I brought up at the meeting quite some time ago um, in reference to the, the planned hotel site we have here on Ocean Avenue. I know there was a study done um, to add that as a discussion on what we're going to do there. I know it's planned for a hotel. I made my position clear on that, and so I want to add that as, um, as an agenda item. And then I also want to add, you know, <clears throat> I just want to thank all the parents for coming out tonight. Um, and, and give my sincere apologies for the situation at hand here. And uh, just, just to let you guys know, my heart goes out for you. And, um, you know, thank you for showing up. All right, thank you, Vice Mayor. As city manager, before you chime in, I see you want to chime in. I just want to make sure we got every bit of your request. So the, the first thing I heard was moving up item 9A. This is the Community Standards Department presentation uh, to after all of the announcements, making it three... E, right? Yes, that's correct. All right, correct. so did I have any uh, consensus on that? Does anybody object to that change? I see no objection, so we'll move that up. Uh, the road paving discussion, hotel site discussion, I have no personal objections to that, anything from my colleagues. All right, looks like we have consensus to have all, the, both, all of those items added. Now, city manager, when he brought up the road paving item, I looked like you wanted to say something. Did you want to chime in? Yes, Mayor. I just want to, this is additional funds into what we had already budgeted because I know the Vice Mayor said a budget amendment. So we want to allocate it. Is there a specific monetary amount we need to look for? Or is that what we can kind of I, present? I think we need to get a scope of work specifically for Seacrest Estates and what other, I mean, other neighborhoods in, um, in the city. You know, I, I mean, I drove by Seacrest Estates this last weekend as a follow-up from a Forest Park meeting and, uh, I mean, those roads are dilapidated, you know, and we have a lot of people moving into the city, a lot of young families that are investing in our city. They're purchasing a house at a higher property value, which makes their tax value higher. And it's our job to make sure these roads are paved and safe. Okay, well, we can add it for a discussion because I'm sure there's other roads in other districts that probably want to be addressed. So I, I understand and I... I'm going to echo what you said, all positive feedbacks about a lot of the uh, paving project that the city has done, specifically from District 4, um, a lot of great feedback. But um, as far as the hotel site, I just want, Adam, do you want to kind of chime in here? Because I know, didn't we send out for an RFP for that uh, site? Or Good evening, Adam Temple, Assistant City Manager. Um, so uh, our staff did... Um, uh, solicit some uh, feedback and input from uh, a commercial brokerage uh, for the town square city parcel. Um, our staff is working on make a presentation. We'll be ready for um, the town square project, which will be the second meeting in March. Uh, we would be available um, to present it at that time, our findings, if that works. Second meeting in March. Second meeting in March. Good with everyone else is good with me. All right. So I saw your hand up, Commissioner Kelly. Did you have a question or comment regarding the request? Um, Vice Mayor Turkin's um, items reminded me about um, that I was looking for 
um, a discussion at a later date regarding our CIP projects and knowing what is on there, what should be on there, and this is kind of a perfect segue having to do with what roads are we on our CIP plan, where are we on that CIP plan, so maybe as part of that, bring that discussion back forward where we can talk about um, prioritizing our CIP, adding those things on there that were discussed during some of the bond conversations that we had, and making sure that everything, all of the projects, road, infrastructure, building, is on our plan so that we know how we can plan and budget going forward. All right, so to be clear, Commissioner, you're asking for an item to be added, the CIP discussion? Yes, I had previously talked about it during the bond discussions that I wanted that to be okay. um, a future agenda it's item that we here. discussed. Um, it was not listed here. Okay. Prioritizing CIP. It might be something that we do as part of um, the budget process, but I wanted to have staff remind staff that that was something that I wanted to move forward with is making sure that whatever projects we had um, uh, were on our wish list that we had, or that was on staff's wish list when mm -hmm. we were talking about the bond. Um, that they made it to our CIP, and then us as a commission could then prioritize that CIP. Um, and so if that's a discussion that needs to happen, I feel like before budget, but around that time, um, as we move forward, that's uh, that's what I would like to happen. Sounds good. It is a much needed conversation, and I see no objections to it. I'll leave you and the city manager to figure out the exact date of when that can be had. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Hay, I also saw your hand up. Uh, yeah, I agree with what Commissioner uh, Kelly is bringing up. I just wanted us to take a look at those CIP projects before we lock in on any amount for anything else to make sure that we know uh, where we're going and what's available and what's not available. So uh, that's all I wanted to say. Just, just move forward with caution. That sounds good. Thank you so much, Commissioner. I'm going to turn now to Commissioner Cruz for any agenda amendments or requests. Um, no, I just wanted to echo the sentiment uh, regarding infrastructure. I know that's something the board has talked about several times, including during the bond discussions, and that's something that I've requested to have at future meetings as well. It appears that it says utility infrastructure, but I was referring to both paving and also um, utility. So yeah, I do definitely support that, um, and I do not have any more changes or additions to the agenda today. Thank you, Commissioner Cruz. Um, as for me, I received a request from council regarding adding a legal update before public audience, if there's no objections to that. Is that correct, council? That is so correct. So this would be right before public audience, making it, yeah, 3F. Yep. Okay. Is this something that requires voting on tonight? My understanding is no. She just wants to make an announcement. Thank you. No, it's yeah. just a legal Thank update. You. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that is one of the requests. Uh, the other request I received was the idea of creating a second public comment. Uh, and the concept would be to have our first public comment, which is already in the agenda, limited to 30 minutes. And if we need more, then we have a second public comment period towards uh, after legal. So that is a proposal that's been put forward by council. It is an option. We can look into it, we don't have to, uh, and there might be some other options too as well, Council. So, all right, is there a consensus on that? All right, yes. thank you everybody. Consensus on what? On limiting public comment to 30 minutes? And creating a second public comment period. The people are here, they're here to speak. Let them speak, let them speak. We're not gonna limit public comment. We're gonna give them their full time. We have parents who have showed up, taking time out of the day to speak. We're gonna let them speak. I didn't understand it was going to be for tonight. Uh, My understanding, this is the proposal that's been presented. For um, tonight? For tonight. So it's only a proposal, and then, everyone would still have the opportunity to speak. We're just dividing into two portions. Council, so the, did you want so to So the public in? has to Vice wait Mayor? until we're finished with the meeting Vice in Mayor, order to speak. One second. We still have public comment where it is on the agenda, but so let's turn to council. This was a suggestion made by the office. We, with the city business that we have on the agenda tonight, we just don't want to run the risk that we don't have time to get the city business done. We're not trying to take away from the public comment. There are several options there. If, if there are, if there's one representative from each group who is willing to speak or a few representatives from each group, that way 
public comment doesn't last two to three hours. The other option is to limit the amount of time each speaker has um, to a minute, a minute and a half. That way we could fit more speakers in for the appropriate amount of time. And then the other option is to do 30 minutes of public comment and then if there are people who still wish to speak at the end of the evening, we would certainly give everyone the opportunity the full three minutes at that time. All right. I've never done around. this before. Why are we doing this now? It's actually part of our new procedures that we're starting. It has not been passed. It has not been I haven't passed seen yet. New procedures. But it, it's not inappropriate. We're still giving the public the opportunity to be heard, but we do have to consider what is appropriate city business as well. All right. Thank you, everybody. Listen, that was just a suggestion. We just need a yes or a no, or let's just, let's go around the dais. Uh, let's, Commissioner Kelly, your thoughts so we can move on. Um, I am, I'm going to pass on this for now because uh, this isn't a discussion that I want to have, so okay. we'll defer. All right. Commissioner Hay? Uh, here's where I am on this. I feel that the uh, parents have come out to speak and they should be allowed to speak. I do feel that, I don't need a applause. I do feel that uh, this board has the option. If we feel that it has uh, been substantially long, that we can vote uh, whether or not to move it to the end. But I, I don't think we just ought to make a blanket statement at this 11th hour uh, since we've had ordinances, or ordinances like this before. Uh, but we have the option to vote to move it uh, to later on if we feel that it has gone unreasonably long. So that's what I would propose, that we uh, let them speak. Uh, I don't give them the three minutes, okay, whatever they want to say, let them say it. And then after whatever that is, we feel that we need to move this so that we can move the agenda for the city, then we have the option to vote it at the end and put it to the end. All right. That's my position. Thank you, Commissioner. Clearly there's no consensus, so we're going to move on. We're going to remain as is. And with that, if there's no other amendment request on the agenda, may have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So move. We have a motion to set it first, uh, Commissioner Kelly. The second came from Commissioner Hay. All those in favor of approving the amended agenda say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion passes unanimously. Let's move on now to informational items by members of the City Commission, beginning on my right with Commissioner Cruz. Informational um, items. Yes, Mayor. I met, I spoke with representatives from both Palti and GWI regarding items A, B, C, yeah, B and C. Um, if we uh, can wait, sorry, Council. we're going to wait and do the disclosures okay. at the time of, of public, public hearing. hearing. Okay. Yes. Okay. Were Sounds there any other general informational items you wanted to share? Nothing else. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Vice Mayor, informational items. Um, no, I attended the first Friday. That was a big hit. A couple of ribbon cuttings at Sushi Bang Bang, new location. I encourage everyone to go check it out. Just uh, west of 95 there. Um, they expanded. I think they have double the amount of tables now. Um, local business been here for about 10 years, so I encourage everyone to go support. But outside of that, no, not until we have public hearing. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Commissioner Hay. Uh, yes. Over these past three weeks, I've been very active, so bear with me. On January 22nd, which was Monday, we had the South Central Regional Wastewater Treatment and Disposal Board meeting. On January 22nd, I attended the um, community meeting in District 2 with uh, the Coalition of Clergy and other community members. On January 23rd, Tuesday, uh, we had a special uh, cemetery meeting with the city and the funeral directors in the local area. Uh, on January 25th uh, was the marketing strategy meeting with the city here uh, to plan out some strategy for future. Uh, January 27th uh, was the Schoolhouse Children Museum uh, Family Fun Day, which was held in Centennial Park in the Amphitheater. January 27th, which is Saturday night, we had what we call a Night of Joy um, with the participants from the city 
uh, and the Unity Community Project, a lot of gospel singing from three in the afternoon until eight, kind of long. Uh, February the 2nd, uh, the Boynton Beach Fire Rescue Award Ceremony was held at uh, Christ Fellowship at, uh, Church. I attended that. Uh, February the 2nd, which was a Friday, we had the uh, Susie Bang Bang Grand Opening Ribbon Cutting Ceremony. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> you, you learn to eat different types of food. Uh, February the 2nd, which was a Friday, uh, we had the uh, first Friday celebration here at our amphitheater. And on February the 3rd, Saturday, I attended the Immortal Four Chap Chaplain's Memorial Service at Tom Kaiser USN Veterans Memorial Park, which was very, uh, very well done. Uh, by the way, they made uh, quilts for all of the uh, participants uh, in, in that particular uh, time frame. Uh, January 20th, I was happy to attend the uh, Historical uh, Society 5th Boynton Beach uh, Florida Highwayman Art Show and Sale. Uh, it featured some of the original artists and the second generation of highwaymen. Now, just uh, just a few couple of more minutes. Uh, this month, uh, the month of February, is considered Black History Month, and I want to share some information about the Florida uh, highwayman that was uh, just done by our um, historical. Uh, society committee. Uh, the, the highwaymen, also referred to as the Florida Highwaymen, are a group of 26 African Americans um, which draw land, landscape artists in Florida. Two of the original artists, uh, Harry Newton and Alfred Hare, received training from Alfred Benny uh, Bankers. It is believed that uh, these painters have uh, a work of over 200,000 paintings. They challenge many racial and cultural barriers, barriers. Mostly from the Fort Pierce area, they painted landscapes and made a living selling those paintings door to door to businesses and individuals throughout Florida from the mid, from the mid 1950s through the 1980s. They also sold those works from the trunks of their cars along the eastern coastal roads A1A and US-1. The highwaymen created large numbers of relatively inexpensive landscape paintings using construction material rather than traditional art supplies. As no galleries would accept their work, they sold their painting in towns and cities and along the roadsides throughout Florida. Often, the paintings were still wet. They sold them out of their trunks and their cars. These, uh, their success and longevity is remarkable considering they began their career in the racially unsettled and violent times of the 1950s in Florida and amid the condition of the Jim Crow uh, South where the stirring of the civil rights movement were only just beginning. They have been called the last great American artist movement of the 20th century. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a brief summary about the Florida Highwaymen. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Kelly. Uh, no, Mayor, most of my disclosures have to do with public, um, with uh, public hearing. I just, um, I did want to just acknowledge the Schoolhouse Museum had a very successful uh, family fun day um, here and you know thank you to Schoolhouse Museum and city staff um, for always uh, you know doing a great job with planning events for our city and our residents um, so that's all I have thank you all right thank you everybody we're gonna move on now to the next portion of the agenda which is announcements community and special events and presentations the first item is the state of education report by district 7 school board member Edwin Ferguson who's here this evening uh, we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us good morning mr. mayor the mic on good morning their respective places I'll be is the mic on sir 
It is. I okay. Thank you, though. Testing one, two, three. You got me now. So again, I'm Edwin Ferguson. I'm your school board member for District 7. Uh, it runs from Riviera Beach down into Del Rey. So in Del Rey, we cover the areas between 95 and US 1. So as I did last year, I'm just here to give you all a report on the progress of the schools, uh, things that hopefully you as a commission, and most importantly as a citizenry, can do to help make sure that our students' performance rates improve, um, and also offer some tools that the students, family, concerned citizens can, can use to help ensure that the students' performances improve here through the rem remainder of this year and also in future years to come. So uh, I'll just ask you to go for the next slide. OK. Oh, oh thank you. So you got the right team. So the main thing that I want to focus on, I want to expedite this a little bit, is speak about the schools, the municipal schools' uh, academic results over the past few years, also the installation of metal detectors, and also the paper online tutoring, because I really think that can be a game changer in terms of helping students um, bridge the shortfalls they may have. And also, for those um, homes where we don't, we don't have parents who necessarily have the time to help the students with homework at home, paper really helps kind of I think it's a game changer, and I just want to make sure that more parents and more people in the city of Boynton Beach are made aware of it. Yeah, anybody wants to cry for me for being a Dolphins fan right now? I'm, I, yes. I take your sympathy. So. Right on. <laughs> All right, come on. All right, so let's start with kindergarten readiness. So as many of you know, and also, I'm sorry, anyone who wants a copy of my uh, slide package, you can just uh, scan that QR code. I know it'll be available, I'm sure, on the city website, or I'm sure this is being recorded, so you all can look at it at a later time. But I really think it's important that everybody knows exactly what information I'm relying on. Oh, so I guess I'll look at this one. Then. You all are hyper technical. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's get to the kindergarten readiness. So I think that's where the rubber meets the road. I'm of the belief that children who start behind tend to stay behind, and those who start ahead tend to stay ahead. So what's interesting about Boynton Beach, at least in relation to District 7 schools, is this. Is it the correct one now? Oh, top. All right. Can I just throw it to you? <laughs> Just say next slide. Yeah, let her do it. I want to get out of your hair. So as to kindergarten readiness, like I said, those who start ahead tend to stay ahead, and those who start behind tend to stay behind. So when we look at the kindergarten readiness scores here in Boynton Beach, a couple of things that stick out is, one, you have a number of schools that tend to meander at or above the district average, which is only 46%. So what that means is, Roughly 54% of our students are not starting school kindergarten ready. Some of the things that we look to to determine kindergarten readiness is the ability to recognize their name in writing. Woodrow Hay, Typer Serga, for example. Whether you hold a pencil properly, I guess the little kids say with the alligator hands versus the baseball grip. Recitation of the alphabet. Um, not necessarily counting up to 100, but there's, I think it might be 1 to 50. Don't quote me on that. But these are some of the kind of basic metrics, some of the basic metrics that we use to determine whether a child is kindergarten ready. And so it troubles me that such a large percentage of our children are not kindergarten ready because these things are things that um, I know from personal experience can be mastered at a very early age. I'm thinking of age two, no later than three for sure. So next slide, please. So when you all download this, this slide deck, these blue hyperlinks, they, have, they give you access to a lot of different um, programs that kindergartners and actually, frankly, two and three year olds should be using in preparation for kindergarten. And they're very easy uh, for the parents to kind of master and use with their children. So I strongly encourage anyone who has a young child ages really two through four to make use of these uh, hyperlinks. Next slide, please. Um, as far as English language arts, so that really, we started testing for ELA in third grade and kind of move forward through fifth grade. So what you see there um, is we have all the schools in Boynton. It was supposed to be just District 7. So I kind of blew through this, I apologize. The District 7 schools are uh, Point Santa Elementary, Galaxy Elementary, Forest Park Elementary, 
Rolling Green and Rolling Green Elementary. The other schools are in board member um, Erica Erica Whitfield's district. But what I what I'm happy to say is that I've noticed in my in my year year plus now on the board that Poinciana continues to be well above the district average. And I actually think that Poinciana kind of has has distinguished itself among district district seven schools because from Riviera Beach to Delray, I cannot think of one elementary school that continually performs above the district average in ELA. So I think that Points Anna should get a round of applause. And I do also know that your continued financial support is a large reason why, in my mind, so many of the, or a greater number of the schools in Boynton Beach perform at or above the district average. Not to say that I'm satisfied with the district average, but again, you all collaboratively with the schools are doing a really good job. And I want to applaud you for that, um, as far as that goes. As you can see, we have some schools that are, that are also well below um, the average. Uh, Boynton High School, Congress Middle, Rolling Green. Rolling Green is a District 7 school. Um, I know that area very well. Um, you have it's kind of a little more transient in that regard, kind of people moving in and out. Um, but I just think we have to try to do a better job of just making sure they have the resources and know what the expectation is for their children um, as they go into our elementary schools and beyond. But again, I really do think that you all are doing a good job as a partner with the school, so I, I just want to applaud you. Um, as I, as I see it. Next slide, please. So again, this is another uh, bevy of, of, of hyperlinks that persons can, can, can utilize. So uh, Dolch words. So some people don't believe in sight words, but we at the district do believe in sight words. So there are certain words that you expect a child who's four years old to be able to master and, and recite on site all the way through fifth grade. Um, so it's about 100 words in each of those links. But if you wouldn't mind parents maybe trying to practice with their children, maybe 10, maybe no more than 15. Their, their uh, attention span is somewhat limited, um, particularly starting at four years old. But I think that'll show real gains moving forward in terms of increasing their aptitude and ability to read, because that does seem to be the biggest reason for a lot of our deficits in, in testing. Uh, Mayor Purser can speak to that as a teacher. The children's ability to comprehend what's being, what's being presented to them. A math problem is mainly reading. English is reading, science is reading, so you have to have an ability to read, read quickly and understand what you're reading. So getting kids to master these dotes words really gives them a jump ahead in terms of, of mastering these tests, which seem to be uh, so heavily weight in their future success in terms of graduation and, and what have you. Next slide, please. Uh, again, this is additional hyperlinks to different, different platforms. You all can read it, so I don't want to waste your time. I know we have a number of people who want to speak, so I'm trying to be respectful of, of, your, of your time. But again, take a look at those different websites. You'll find a bevy, a lot of information that you'll find very useful for you and your children. Next slide, please. Mathematics. Again, the district average is, is about 55. And again, I'm moving so fast. I try to, I need to do a better job of explaining it to you. When, it's, when you see district average for ELA, math, science, social studies, what we're talking about is the number of students at a school who perform at a level three or better. So I'm gonna oversimplify this, but think of a three or better as a C or better. So a three would be a C, a four would be a B, a five would be an A. So here in Palm Beach County, roughly 55% of our children perform at a C or better in math. Okay, that's not the worst. We just saw kindergarten readiness at 46, but clearly, Considering the fact we're in an international environment, we should have a greater expectation for our children in terms of performing at a C or better. In my mind's eye, we should be able to get this number up to 75% here in short fashion, particularly if we have a greater commitment from the community to use some of the resources that you're gonna see um, here shortly. But before I go, again, I wanna applaud Poinciana. It's a District 7 school, so I'm biased in that regard. But they really are doing a good job. Like I said, they tend to be at or above the district average. So perhaps we should speak to them to find out, hey, what's the secret to your sauce? Because those children, from an economic standpoint, a demographic standpoint, are very similar to the children at Rolling Green, Congress Middle, Galaxy Elementary, Forest Park as well. Those are the District 7 schools. I can't speak to the demographics of the other, other schools that are in Board Member Whitfield's district. But again, Point Sand is doing some good work. So I wanna definitely take time to applaud them for what they're doing. Uh, next slide, please. So geometry, that's gonna be limited to high school and middle school. Um, Congress is doing a good job in terms of staying ahead of the district average. Um, I don't know how many students are taking geometry there, but I see last school year they had 100%. Can't do much better than that. So I definitely want to applaud Congress for, 
for their students' performances on geometry, and I hope this is another year of 100% there. Um, you see Boynton High is a little below, below that number. I think utilization of paper, I know we're gonna get to that shortly, I think that can really help them in terms of their proficiency in geometry, which will result in them performing at a better rate when they take the year-end examination. Next slide, please. Algebra, that's gonna be, of course it's pretty much taken seventh, eighth, and for some students, ninth through 12th grade. But we see Congress Middle in regard to algebra, the district, they're well ahead of the district average, so I wanna salute Congress in that regard. We see Boynton at a much lower rate. Um, I think the reason for that is students in, students in middle school who are taking algebra are, are advanced students. That's not really a class you would expect a sixth or seventh grader to take. Like I said, many students take it in high school. So these are gonna be your higher performing students, honestly, that are taking it, so it shouldn't be a surprise that a larger number of them are meeting that three or better average. The students at Boynton are not necessarily, from what I know, are not necessarily those children that are in advanced courses and things of that nature, but that's not necessarily an excuse. We still should raise the level of expectation and do what we need to do to support them to help get more of them past the, the three or better average. Uh, next slide, please. Again, there are a number of hyperlinks embedded in, into this slide. Parents and, and citizens, please take the time to look at it at your leisure. You'll find a lot of helpful information for you and your children there. Next slide is for science. So again, we see our district average is at 51%. And once again, we see Poinciana generally hovering above the line. Uh, last year, they were just below it. Um, as were many of the schools, but and I would say I've noticed that science scores tend to taper off in comparison to math, um, even comparison to English. I've not had a chance to really ask our chief of academics why or speak to other speak to teachers throughout out the district, but as far as the numbers go, we do see that science tends to be a more challenging course for our students to show mastery of. So um, if we go to the next slide, perhaps if we, um, oh, I was two slides for it, I'm sorry. So with biology, we only have one school that, that where students are tested for biology, and that's to be expected. That's a high school level course. So we see that the district average is at 63%, which is not bad, um, can always be better. And we see Boynton is, is, is generally below, below that number. I know you have a new principal at, at Boynton. I have a lot of hopes for him. Um, very organized person, a great leader, and I'm expecting a lot of gains in, in terms of Boynton Beach performance here in the next year to two to three. I know this is his first year at Boynton, so I'm very, really anxious to see how their end of year scores compare to these, these prior years. But uh, Dr. Moody is his name. He's, by all accounts, doing a really good job thus far at Boynton. In regard to science, the scientific method, which is the next slide, whenever it pops up, again, if you click those links, you'll see different, different ways that you can kind of make science fun for, for your students at home. It's a lot of times, at least thing going back to how many years it was when, when I was in high school, that was not necessarily my, my most exciting course, chemistry, uh, biology, and those type of things. But there are a lot of uh, example experiments that you can use to try to make it more exciting, particularly for your elementary and middle school age children. So again, family and everyone who's watching this, take a look at that, that, that hyperlink and you'll be surprised. Next slide, please. So U.S. history is also a course that across the district most students perform well in. As you can see, that district average is at 62%. And we see that, that Boynton, uh, the scores are, at least in prior years, have been you know, well below that. But again, with Dr. Moody there at Boynton, I, I would not be surprised if we see a fairly substantial uptick in the next year or two in terms of the US history scores at Boynton High School. I'll say go Tigers, too. They're, they're purple and gold. That's one of my favorite combinations. So yeah, keep it up, Tigers. Uh, next slide, please, civics. Uh, again, a class that we see a lot of students who show mastery of. 65% is the, is the countywide average. So at Congress Middle, we have an average of around 53% last year and the prior year before is 49%. All things considered, I look at this as a positive um, direction for Congress because you can see three years ago, uh, the 20, uh, 2021 school year, Congress is at roughly 36%, it jumped to 49% and then 53%. So we see the positive growth, and I'm just hoping that they can kind of carry that forward into the next school year, into this school year, I'm sorry. Next slide, please, we'll just kind of go push through this again, more of the same pattern. I'll show you the data, then I'll show you the hyperlinks for uh, courses and classes that you, you can take advantage of to help benefit your students uh, in their times at home or over the weekend. Uh, we can skip the next slide, too, it's more of the, more of the same in that regard. Um, how you can help. So parents, I'm really 
big on being collaborative. So school is not, child care is not daycare. It really should, in my opinion, I'm gonna step on the soapbox for a minute, it really should enhance things that are already happening at home. So in my, in my experience as an attorney, particularly criminal defense attorney, I think it really does start at the educational level. Um, so if we wanna see lower unemployment, less crime, more productive citizens, we gotta do what we have to do as parents. I'm a parent as well, I have two young children. So we need to do what we need, can do at home when we can. So these are some points that the district believes would be very helpful in terms of making sure your child reads and has a, 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 st a standard place to do homework every night, whether it's the kitchen table, whether it's a room in their room, wherever, just a, a standard place where they know they can make use of it for a half hour, or hour, however long they need to do their work. Um, parents being involved in school, I know we hear a lot about parents' bill of rights. Newsflash, we've always had the right to come into the schools. And so I do think it's important that the teachers and administrators hear from us as the parents because these are our kids. They're not their kids as far as that goes. So knowing kind of what our struggles may be at home, um, learning more about what's being taught at school, I think that's very helpful and it will help ensure that your child and our children are performing at their optimum level. So being more involved in the SAC meetings and the PTA meetings and going to events at school, I know some of the kids are not necessarily pitch perfect, but just you know, being in the audience when they're having their, their fall festivals and things of that nature can go a long way to ensuring that those children are interested in going to school because mom and dad like it, mom and dad support me there, so hey, let me do more. It's more like a positive reinforcement thing. Um, community members, same, same for you. Even if you don't have a chill, child currently in school or, or, or have a child who's gonna be in school later, it's still important for you to be there as a stakeholder because these still are your children by association. They're residents of your city. So they're either gonna be your mayors, your chief of police, um, your, your janitorial team, your parks and record, whatever the case may be. So you showing support to them now is gonna pay benefits to us in the future because this is really a top-notch city. And so every, every student, every child has a lot of uh, inherent worth. And I think it's our job, whether we're their parents or whether we're their neighbors, to try to make sure that we kind of adduce all of that out of them as soon as possible. Uh, next slide, metal detectors. This is something that I, if I had to pat myself on the back for some of the things I've been fortunate to do a lot of, in my opinion, big things in this first year and some change, this is, this is one of them. Uh, this is something that I strongly encourage the superintendent to look into uh, shortly after getting on the board. And to Mr. Superintendent Burks's credit, he and Chief Mooney, our chief of police, did a really good job of formulating a strategy for the implementation of metal detection devices. So we just completed our trial program of metal detection devices at four high schools. As you can see, John I. Leonard, Palm Beach Lakes, Palm Beach Gardens, and Seminole Ridge High School. Good news is we have all the metal detection de uh, detectors here uh, in-house now, so we will have them at all high schools by the end of this school year. They'll be at all middle schools by the end of next year, and then they'll be at all elementary schools by the following year. Again, just based on my practice as an attorney, I know that these are, have tra traditionally been soft targets, and I would that no child ever be injured by way of gun violence or by the way of a knife being brought on campus, and this is a strong deterrent in that regard. In fact, I will tell you that at these four schools, there have been no guns uh, found on persons on this campus, and I know that has to be in part due to the deterrent effect of knowing that there are metal detection devices here. And I do not recall there even being any knives um, taken from students or persons coming on campus. So it is having its intended effect. And I'm happy to say that in short fashion, all 188 schools are gonna have this additional safety metric there as well. Now I wanna also briefly talk about paper. I mentioned that earlier. So it's a 24 seven um, tutoring software. Uh, next slide. Just by show of hands, uh, Mayor and city, com city Council, have any of you heard of paper? Okay, we got, oh, of course, of course you did show off, but, but most people don't, and it's a shame because it's something that's paid for by the school district for several years now, but so few people know about it. Family, parents, I know many of you work one and two jobs, maybe even more than that, and you really just don't have the time to kind of sit down with Johnny or Jane to review math or science or English or whatever the case may be. Paper helps kind of bridge that, that, that gap, if you will. So even if you're not there, if your child knows to go to this website, they can have a tutor actually help them with these respective courses. On top of that, there's even, a uh, next slide please. If you have a child who's is fluent in Creole, and I know we have a large Haitian population here in Boynton, or we have a child that's fluent in Spanish, I know we have a large Hispanic population here in Boynton as well. They actually can use the paper voice notes, vo voice notes function to, to get tutoring in math, English, science, what have you, in their native language. So again, 
paper gives you an opportunity to kind of get ahead of the game, catch up and actually get ahead of the game. And we just really need to make greater use of it. So wherever I go, every single city council meeting that I've been to thus far, I keep speaking about paper. And I really want you all to kind of, kind of dive head first in it. I really think it can be a game changer. And I think it can help bridge that gap because I know that there are many parents that want to be there to help their children at home, but because of the state of affairs, they have to you know, go to job number two or whatever the case may be. So this is the district's attempt to be sympathetic, empathetic, whichever pathetic you want to use, to try to help make sure that children have the additional resources that they need at home to be their best selves. Um, can we just skip to the New World's Reading Initiative slide, please? Because I know, like I said, I don't want to belabor these points. This is a new program that was passed by the state. So again, it's meant to try to help children who are not reading at grade level. So basically, I, what I would do, if, if you know your child is, let's say you have a third grader who's reading on the first grade level or a fifth grader reading on the second grade level, the school should have already identified them being at a deficit. Um, and what should be happening is you should be set up to be re receiving extra reading materials at home. But if you feel that your child is you know, at a deficit or have questions about whether your child is reading at a deficit, you can go to your school and ask them to assess Johnny or Jane to find out where they're reading at. Are they reading at grade level? Are they reading below grade level? If they're reading below grade level, the state has already set up this program where books will be sent um, intermittently, no less than monthly, to your home so that your child can practice reading to get them up to and hopefully above their standard grade level. So I salute the state for doing something like this. Um, it's bipartisan, it's smart, ease. Education should not be about whether you're R or a D, it should be about whether your child is being educated. So I do salute Tallahassee in that regard for having the foresight to implement this um, across the aisles. And I'm gonna skip the graduation requirements. It's pretty straightforward. And like I said, I can see there are a number of people who have some things they want to say. Um, and with the remainder of my time, if there are any questions from the mayor or the commission, I'd be happy to answer them if I can. Uh, thank you, uh, school board member. We appreciate your presentation and your time. And I just a special thank you for recognizing Point Siena. They often get overlooked, but clearly they're making some serious gains, right? And we clearly have a lot more work to do, but we need to celebrate wherever we have some successes. So Absolutely. thank you for that. Let's go around the dais. Uh, Commissioner Cruz, do you have any questions or comments? No, just thank you for your presentation today. Thank you. Right, thank you, Vice Mayor. Thanks, everyone. Good seeing you. Good Thanks see again you for again. the presentation, very thorough. Commissioner Hay. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, uh, Board Member Ferguson, but the, the Pont Santa Elementary School yes, sir. has a plan, uh, planetarium yes. and is the only one that I know of east of the Mississippi. Are we doing anything to assist, uh, enhance, uh, invest, or maybe that's one of the reasons why the kids are doing so great there. Uh, what's the plan for that? Because that's very unique. It is. I had a chance to, to visit the school um, early last year, and I was blown away by it. I thought I was at the uh, Science Museum up in West Palm Beach. It is very impressive. As far as marketing, uh, I'm not sure, Commissioner. Um, I guess just from a practical standpoint, would you, would you want it to be made available to other citizens of Boynton Beach to, to visit from time to time? Is that, is that what your ask is? I would like to talk to the principal about that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't know if there are any prohibitions against that, um, so I don't want to speak to that point, but I think if it's possible, if it doesn't you know, violate any standard protocols and procedures, I'd love for more citizens of Boynton to partake of it. It really is a great, great exhibit, for lack of a better term. I agree with you. Do you happen to know the letter grade for Boynton Beach Community Community High School? I don't. I don't. And you. And thank you for saying that, Commissioner. Moving forward, I like these these um, presentations that I do to be more specific to each city. Like I like numbers, but I understand if you all don't, it might not be the bees knees for you. So if you say, hey, Board Member Ferguson, next year I'd like you to be able to give us a report on issue X or issue Y because every city has different issues. I'm, I'm open to doing that. So mayor, city council, just kind of let me know what you'd like to hear from me next time. Because I, I was just thinking about that when I was in uh, Delray a few weeks ago. I'm like, okay, the numbers are pretty much always going to kind of be the same, but maybe there's something else that, because I, like I said, I'm big on co being collaborative. I'm not like preaching down to you. Obviously, it's, that's not what this is. So I'm here to serve. So you all let me know what you really want to know about. Then it's my job to get that to you. So I, if that, if, 
that's if you're okay with that as far as thinking about what issues you want me to kind of research and delve into next year when I come I would like the presentation to be more tailored to what does say if the city council at Boynton Beach just one last question just curiosity uh, I know it's new the metal detectors in yes. the high schools and everything have you noticed or heard an increase in the time that it takes students to get in in the schools yeah, so the, the bunch of naysayers, they were just being naysayers. Um, <laughs> so what happened, let's take Palm Beach Lakes for an example. Yeah, that first week, or maybe two at most, the children had to kind of get it, get used to the fact that now you have to go through this metal detection device. But one, it's just like going to the airport. Once you kind of know what you can and can't bring to the airport, you don't bring those things. So there hasn't been any appreciable delay in terms of getting students into, into the schools. So, and again, when you consider the, the additional safety that this is now affording us, it's a win-win across the board. Very good. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Kelly. Thank you, um, board member. Um, I think that um, just you were kind of touching on some things that we would like to hear about, and I think that this was, um, you know, we, we are used to hearing the, the numbers and the statistics and what's going on in the legislative process, and we don't usually get to see what you presented tonight. So thank you for for presenting that. I think it's important for, um, for our city members to see what, um, what the district and what our students are up against yes. um, and then what the district is doing to, uh, to kind of try and bridge that gap. Uh, so I think that that's, um, that maybe my ask would be, what are, what are we doing? What's the district doing to bridge that gap when we see um, a significant um, testing drop um, or a school that has issues. Um, you know, Boynton Beach now, I think officially uh, as of this year, um, all of our schools are Title I schools. Yes. Um, and so I know with that comes additional support and additional assistance, but, um, you know, we don't have to talk about it tonight, but at some point, you know, what's the school district doing for the schools that are seeing struggles. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a long time, science was kind of on the back burner. I think it's coming back to the forefront now. And so we're seeing um, improvement in the science scores, but I know that that's a deficit even, um, you know, at, at other schools as well. Uh, so that would be kind of my ask in, you know, is what the district is doing, what are some of the key things, that, and that's something that you and I can have a conversation about as well. I have an answer for that now, actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, um, so that was, that was really my only, um, my only ask. No, I really liked this presentation. I think it's um, important and useful to our residents and our parents uh, to give them uh, this information, yes. you know, even if the school is, is sending it home. I have two kids. A lot of times the papers get stuck in backpacks and I don't see them. Um, so uh, so I, I like having, you know, this. It's quick and easy at everyone's hands. So thank you. So if you could just answer that one yes. question, that would be great. So we have a new test that has been administered. So last year, um, some of the scores were frankly not so great. And we're not sure whether it's the students just didn't take it seriously, take it serious enough, or, or whether they weren't prepared well enough. So I do know, in speaking with Superintendent Berg and Chief of Schools, uh, Ed Tierney, and also Chief of Academics, uh, Dr. Glenda Sheffield, that what we're doing now is making a concerted effort to send many of the staff that is housed down at the main building at 3300 Forest Hill to specific schools where there seems to be a drop off, whether it's consistent or just from last year to help kind of educate, teach the teachers on how best to teach our students. And so we're fairly confident that this year's end of year scores will be better than last year because I'm sure as you know, we, were, we are currently not A rated. You remember most of our uh, headers always say A, you know, A rated school district. Right now technically we're B. We just barely missed the cutoff, but we missed it nonetheless. And so Superintendent Burke has formulated a strategy with the aforementioned uh, Chiefs uh, Department heads area division heads, whatever the terminology they use there, um, to make sure that we have a better game plan to ensure that we get back to being an A-rated school as soon as possible. So again, I've been saluting a lot of people tonight. I do think Superintendent Burke has really been doing a really good job. I think he's the right person um, at this time to be our superintendent. He's doing a really exceptional job, in fact, I would say. Awesome. Thank you for that question. Thank, thank yes. you so much. 
All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. You have a good night. Go Chargers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have a series of announcements to make. However, they're just items that I read, so I'm gonna to try to power through them. The very first announcement is regarding the Joe DiMaggio Children's Health Specialty Center Magic Wheels and Special Deals event. Uh, this event is being held on Friday, February 9th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Boyne Beach Arts and Cultural Center located right across the street, 125 East Ocean Avenue. This is a free event for the entire family that includes a disability services resource fair, music, live performances, and the Magic Wheels unveiling. If you haven't been to it, I highly recommend. This year's Magic Wheels recipient is Leonardo, who is eight years old and lives in West Palm Beach with his parents, Anthony and Laura. The next announcement is regarding the 12th annual Barrier Free 5K. It is being hosted by the Greater Boyne Beach Foundation along with the Recreation and Parks Department on Saturday, February 10th, starting at 7.30 a.m. at Congress Avenue Barrier Free Park located at 3111 South Congress Avenue. For more information regarding the annual Barrier Free 5K uh, and 5K registration, visit barrierfree5k dot pbrace dot com. The next announcement is regarding the Oceanfront Bark event. So this is our dog event at the beach. Oceanfront Bark, Boyne Beach uh, Dog Potty on the beach will be hosted. Uh, it's meant to be party, potty at the beach. I will be hosted by the Recreation and Parks Department on Saturday, February 17th, 2024 from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Oceanfront Park located at 6415 North Ocean Boulevard. This month's theme is Puppy Love in honor of Valentine's Day. This is the final oceanfront bark event of the season due to the start of turtle nesting season in March. This event is free for all well-behaved licensed dogs and their owners and includes food trucks, vendors, and pet-friendly giveaways. Uh, dogs will be allowed off-leash in a designated fenced area. Parking at Oceanfront Park is free for the duration of the event for all beach patrons. For more information, visit the city's website, boynton-beach.org. That concludes those announcements. The next item that we moved up was the community standards presentation. I see the director is here, okay. Candace Stone. Were you going to do the legal announcement as yes, part of the announcement? It would be after, or after that. this. I apologize. Yeah. No, no, no worries. So that would be right before public audience. So, Ms. Stone, feel free to begin whenever you're ready. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. I am Candace Stone, the Community Standards Director, and I will pre be presenting the Community Standards Department Manager update. For the sake of time, I'm kind of going to go through a little quickly. I have quite a bit of slides. Okay, so first slide we have is the Department Mission and Statement, which Community Standards is committed to encouraging good neighbor practices through examples of excellent community stewardship to achieve sustainable compliance through cooperation, support, inspiring long-term results, and providing ex excellent customer service, and a few of the department core services to educate residents and business owners about the city ordinances while seeking voluntary compliance, responding to citizens uh, request for service for enforcement of city regulations, identifying abating public nuisances, and providing cus excellent customer service through our outreach coordinator. The next slide I have is our performance matrix, which at the end of the last fiscal year, we ended the year with an 82% compliance rate, which is really good compared to the average of 75%. Out of the 3,842 new code cases, there was only 651 were complaint driven. So the next part is our current initiatives that we're working on. The chronic nuisance program, which we've had 15 properties cited for the chronic nuisance activity and only two remain in violation. This is a um, program where 
the police identify properties that produce excessive service calls, uh, that also bring properties to prions, to the Chronic Nuisance Committee, I apologize. The Chronic Nuisance collaborates on a correction plan that will help the reduce and hopefully eliminate service calls being produced and bringing up the overall standards of the property. We do plan to update the ordinance so that way we can get quicker results and compliance. We have a federal highway uh, beautification initiative that we're doing where uh, prior to my employment, we started with the city started with the north side of Federal Boynton Beach, where we engage with the property owners, the enhance their overall appearance through education and voluntary compliance. We recently started to focus on the south side of Boynton and Federal, um, and 25 new cases have been opened during that inspection. Then we have the Seacrest Boulevard beautification where we're engaging with the property owners to enhance their overall appearance through education and voluntary compliance. This initiative started September of last year. By the end of the sweep across all of Seacrest, we had 160 cases that were opened and working towards compliance. Every month, um, Community Standards coordinates uh, street cleanups where we clean up and remove trash from public property, from public property. With the help of the fire department with the most recent street cleanup, we removed over 200 pounds of trash and litter. Last year, we created a new position for solid waste. It's a solid waste specialist. And from the inception of this position in February 23 through December, they cited 47 legal roll-offs, which means a loss of the city for $47,000 approximately due to residents not using, companies not using um, city-issued roll-offs. And by creating this position and proactively going out and, and uh, educating the public, we were able to retrieve $25,448 from those illegal roll-offs. We also received from mandatory service charges around $22,000 um, from properties that were cited for oversized and early set out of bulk trash. Another initiative is increasing property maintenance standards, and some of the examples will be uh, landscaping maintenance, driveway maintenance, exterior maintenance, fence maintenance, and removing and focus on graffiti. Our next initiative is community outreach, where we coordinate with communities so we can meet with the residents and go over quote ordinances and educate, take suggestions. And aside from educating our residents and business owners, we also hope to build a meaningful relationship during these meetings, which thus far has been successful. We adopted identifying and regulating short-term rental properties we adopted a new ordinance um, last year, and then we also implemented new software that identifies and reports short-term rentals to the city. Some future initiatives um, that we're hoping to implement is Home of the Month, which at the end of this, we will go over some more details for Home of the Month, because we are ready to implement that. Uh, Patrick. Hart was going to present, but he come and came under the weather. Um, updating property maintenance ordinances, developing a lien amnesty program, conducting biannual COU inspections, rental inspections, and implementing community standard workshops for residents and business owners to help, again, educate. <clears throat> uh, 
And then we have some new software implementations. So we're in the process right now of, of um, putting together and implementing the SAGES code gov, which is gonna be a software program we use out in the field, which will allow customers to report um, concerns directly to their assigned specialist. We'll have automatic emails that'll be sent out in real time with case status updates, which would be really helpful to the residents. Um, so that way they can answer much quicker than calling and waiting for us to respond. This will integrate with building and zoning permits and will significantly reduce the paper usage that we're currently doing. And then all case information will be located in one accessible location, accessible to pretty much everybody. Host compliance is the software program that we um, purchase to monitor uh, vacation rentals and helps capture unregistered short-term rental properties that are not aware of recent past city regulations and gives them a chance to comply. As of today, there is over 300 properties listed. And as of today, since we've only shortly, inter, um, shortly uh, started this program, implemented it, we have 24 registered and issued short-term rental licenses. And then we implemented HURA property registration, which just is another company, a software program that identifies the vacant and abandoned properties and they proactively, um, proactively contract those with the obligation to register. They collect the necessary registra registration information, apologize, uh, process the payment. So it's basically a one-stop shop who helps monitor the uh, abandoned properties. Oh, sorry, I just realized I did not click on that. Sorry, trying to get through this quickly. Uh, so this is the home in a month. And this is, we would like to implement this uh, starting March. And Basically what we've noticed in the recent years that we've observed numerous uh, residents in our neighborhoods undergoing remarkable transformations involving from unattractive eyesores into stunning properties. The objective of this uh, program is to recognize and honor residents' properties that either match or exceed the city of Boynton Beach requirements for property maintenance and hopefully encourage healthy competition amongst homeowners. And the winner, the homeowner, will receive a um, exclusive sign of the home, you know, for their, their front yard for the home of the month, $25 gift card to Boynton Diner. That's the current sponsor we have, but we plan to have a sponsor and ask for sponsors in different districts, not just one. And then a photo opportunity with the property owner standing in front of their home, recognizing them and posting it on social media. And... If you have any questions, sorry I went through that super fast, <laughs> but if you have any questions, let me know. All right, thank you, Ms. Stone, for your presentation and your hard work and to your entire team. Let me begin now with Commissioner Kelly for questions and comments. Uh, no, just thank you for this presentation. I think it's important that we um, hear from, uh, thank you, City Manager, for, um, for doing this. I think it's important to feature uh, departments in the city to see what's uh, up and coming, and so thank you. Commissioner Hay? I too say thank you for the presentation and the response from community standards. Whenever I put in a request for something in the community, you guys are right on it, and I want to let you know publicly that I really appreciate it. Thank you. Keep up the good works. Thank you. And Candace, I forgot to mention, thank you for the community cleanups. I know that's a collaborative effort from multiple departments. Uh, it's something I appreciate. I'm sure we all appreciate. So keep up the hard work. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Candace, thanks for your leadership. Um, and, and thanks to Community Standards Division as a whole. There's been uh, 
a huge progress, especially in the east side of the city. And so thank you so much for that. I love the initiatives. I think Home of the Month is a great incentive. Um, you typically see that a lot in HOA neighborhoods. Um, we do have a lot of non-HOA neighborhoods here in the east side. So I love seeing that. I love the cleanups. I love the um, sponsorship, too, with Boyton Diner. I thought that was pretty clever. <laughs> and, um, you know, the amount of garbage that has been collected and taken care of over the last few years is um, astronomical. And I know, you know, me being in a non-HOA neighborhood, I really appreciate that. So you guys work extremely hard. Um, and so thank you for everything you all do. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cruz. Everything's pretty much been said, but thank you so much um, to the Community Standards Department and for helping making our city more beautiful. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you. We're going to turn now to our council for the legal update. Um, Ms. Lamb. Just wanted to, uh, there's been some questions regarding the East Boynton Beach uh, Little League litigation that is involved with the city. And because of that, I'm going to give an update to the extent I can because it does involve litigation, so I need to tread very carefully. But just to give a little um, context, the contract was signed with um, Athletic Angels on April 11th of 2023. There was an amendment on October 3rd of 2023 and a major site plan approval on November 7th, 2023, and the order went out approving the site plan for Field 1 on November 9th, 2023. Just a little background on Athletic Angels. It's a nonprofit organization with a history spanning over two decades devoted to enhancing the lives of local youth. Through the provision of essential resources, valuable opportunities, memorable experiences, and mentoring, Athletic Angels strives to make a positive impact on the community. Mike Barwis serves as a board member of Athletic Angels. Currently, Athletic Angels is undertaking a project to renovate, repair, and manage Field 1 in accordance with the sports facility use agreement between the city and Athletic Angels. The agreement was amended on October 3rd. The project involves the installation of synthetic turf on all playing services, as well as the addition of new dugouts, netting, and fencing. Athletic Angels has dedicated over $2 million to ensure the successful completion of this initiative. Collaborating closely with the city, Athletic Angels has ensured that all improvements align with the overall park plan including future renovations. The ongoing construction work adheres to local and state regulations and is under vigilant supervision of both the city and Athletic Angels. Upon completion, Athletic Angels will take on the responsibility of maintaining, repairing, and operating the field at its sole cost and expense. Teams from the Senior League Division of East Boynton Beach Little League will have access to Field 1 as outlined in the agreement. Furthermore, Athletic Angels has committed to installing synthetic turf at Field 5 in conjunction with the city's future park renovation plans. This move is expected to provide significant benefits to the city and East Point Beach Little League. Programming, including lower maintenance costs and the ability to resume play sooner after adverse weather conditions. Athletic Angels will not have exclusive usage rights for Field 5. Separately, Primetime Sports Group, managed by Phil Toronto, has a distinct and unrelated agreement with the city to develop a training facility Look. at the park. Primetime and Athletic Angels are not affiliates, partners, or associates in any way. Moving on. Athletic Angels ensures high quality competitive programming for team for teams. They will also help alleviate financial barriers associated with playing competitive baseball for those in needs. In order to contribute to other baseball programs and initiatives within the city, Athletic Angels organize coaching clinics for parent volunteers, enhancing their baseball competency. They will also host an annual free training day for Boynton Beach resident youth baseball players extending an open invitation to Little League participants and anyone interested in baseball. As part of its commitment to inclusivity, 
Athletic Angels will organize free baseball events for handicapped children. Senior league divisions with East Boynton Beach Little League will have access to Field One. During the fall and spring seasons in accordance with the sports use, uh, facility use agreement with the city. In order to ensure that the city of Boynton Beach can fulfill the needs of the community, members who desire to partake in t-ball related activities, Athletic Angels will develop and operate a free t-ball program for residents in coordination with the city. This program will begin upon completion of the work on field one. This initiative will eliminate financial constraints for any participating families in the city. All volunteer coaches will be trained and supported by Athletic Angels baseball staff. Additionally, travel and academy level players can contribute to this free t-ball program for community service hours. Some of the upcoming events that Athletic Angels participated in or will be participating in, they assisted with the Boynton Beach PAL Bill Tomei Free Football Clinic by providing performance coaches. They sponsored the Bill Tomei Foundation Golf Event to foster community integration and support. And in April of 2024, they will be co-hosting a pickleball tournament fundraiser with the First Step Foundation at the Hester Community Center aimed at aiding local athletes and individuals with neurological conditions. I had a meeting with East Boynton Beach Little League on November 17th of 2023. At that time, we discussed the closing of Field One. I then had a meeting again with the attorney for East Boynton Beach Little League on December 7th of 2023, once again discussing the renovations to Field One. I was sent um, an email that was sent by a board member of the East Point Beach Little League that reads, we are asking for your vote whether or not to obtain a lawyer in, in filing to file the injunction against the city. As a board member, please note that this is confidential and not be shared with anyone including the city of Boynton Beach officials. The Athletic Angels Foundation is planning on closing field one from December through possibly June. We are looking to stop the project altogether and have it put back up for bidding. The city gave full control of field one to Athletic Angels where they will be issuing permits and could potentially tell us we can't use field one on any, any given night. As you know, field one is where the seniors, as, I'm sorry, I'm reading, seniors field is where we have all our t-ball games and practices, senior games and the Little League events. That is um, not correct based upon the reading of the agreement and what we have put in place to make sure East Point Beach Little League can continue to operate. The goal here is to upgrade the field so that it is a beautiful field for everyone. Finally, um, the building permits were issued on December 18th, 2023. We received the performance and payment bond and thereafter issued the notice of commencement. And then East Point Beach Little League filed the complaint on January 18th of 2024. So that is where we are at with the time frame and how all of this evolved. And I just wanted to make sure that the commission as well as the public is aware of what transpired and how we arrived at this point. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Council. Um, I'm sorry, one other thing. We did make arrangements. Um, we offered additional fields in advance um, for them to play. And um, the... Ladies and gentlemen, one second, please. We do not interrupt each other. You will have the opportunity to speak. We'll take turns, all right? Go ahead. Please continue and finish. Thank you. So this was offered, but the, the way the use permit of East Boynton Beach Little League works is they have to have a permit to use the field and no permits have been issued for field one because of the construction. And that has been, there have no permits were requested and no permits were issued for field one. That is where we are at, thank you. Thank you for that lengthy update. Um, before we begin public audience, I just wanna remind the audience a couple of things and we do have people online as well. Uh, each person, as usual, will have three minutes. We do have two podiums, so we're going to go back and forth between the two podiums. 
If you are here representing a group or a team, I would recommend that representatives come up first, since you're speaking on behalf of your organization or your team. Uh, this is not a Q&A, but we are listening, staff is listening, we're taking down notes, and we will reach out to you after this meeting has concluded. For those of you that are listening and wish to speak online, please keep your uh, hands raised throughout the duration of the in-person public comments. We will accept uh, public comments up until the very last person in the room has spoken. Uh, after that, uh, we will go back and forth again in the audience, all right, between the two podiums. All right, uh, if you haven't been here before, remember to state your name for the record and, um, and begin. All right, so please form a line between the two podiums. Again, we'll go back and forth. I would like to just quickly share that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ms. Ferg. So, all right, thank you, but please, no yelling from the crowd. Uh, all right, okay. Um, like I said, if you are here, if your representative come up first, if you have time constraints come up first, I'm sure you guys can work that out, all right? So we do have two podiums, we'll go back and forth. Ms. Oyer, I believe you're the first one, so we'll begin with you. Give me one second to switch the timer. All right, you may begin. Thank you, so I wanted to be first just to talk off topic and let them have their say later on. So I wanted to remind everyone that um, Blooming and Boynton 2 is this weekend. It is the event that I sponsor and organize and give to the residents and the businesses of this city. This is my gift to everyone. This is also my advertising budget for my real estate business. So yes, uh, it's, it's a business expense. Um, if you wanna come, it's a free family event. The cards are in the back. There's information all over the city, website, as well as um, social media. Um, second of all, I want to say I understand we have an issue of, of coming forward about destroying the mangroves at the north end of town. Please know that I know about it, and I'm finding out more, and I am still waiting for the clerk's information that I put in a request for days ago, so I certainly hope I'll be getting information shortly from the clerk on that. Um, so you know I am going to move heaven and earth to make sure our mangroves do not get destroyed especially after what happened at the South End. Um, I would like to say I've had some dealings with a couple city employees the last few weeks, and I, the last week, and I wanna praise and commend Alyssa, Vanessa, and Elise today over in planning. They have been exemplary, and of course, you can never say enough good things about Jay. Um, and then I will finish up with the topic of the night, which is um, this whole Little League thing is embarrassing to our city. These people have been here for decades. We have won a World Series Little League Championship. <laughs> and, and to give away our fields for a pittance over a pipe dream of Major League Baseball stars that, you know what, I'm sorry, I, I read the news too and see the stats, that every stat shows that b baseball that comes in doesn't, you know, the major leagues don't bring money. You Cities actually lose money. So I'm wondering why we're giving away our children's future and their playground for a pittance amount of money for 50 years. And these little league, our, our, our World Series kids were an inspiration. We had a TV show out here filming the restoration of this park. And now you're, you know, you're ripping it all up for a pittance amount of money. And I saw what happened Sunday, because I drove by and saw how the whole fields got trashed up and destroyed. That's embarrassing for our city. It's embarrassing that you have children out here telling you what you're doing is wrong. So please do the right thing and get rid of these contracts and support the Little League and the parents and the kids. All right, next person, please state your name for the record and begin uh, when you're yes. ready. Yes, my name is Dorothy Highland, and um, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Commissioner, uh, I reside at uh, Village Royale on the Green, Northeast First Court, Boynton Beach. You've both been to our place. Uh, we're having a problem with, we have people that go to our pool, they do, the kids walk through our, um, they come from Gateway and they walk through Northeast First Court to get to school. Cars are speeding by. We have people that walk in the morning, elderly people, and I'm just afraid, myself, I almost got hit by a car one day. The street, it, it's just terrible, the cars speeding by, so what I'm requesting is if we could get some stop signs 
uh, stop a pedestrian and some walkways put in uh, before there is a fatality. Uh, the kids, I see them, they, they just run down the street and it's, it's really frightening. So I have a petition here that we all signed from Village Royale on the Green. If I could give it to you and... Mr. Temple, would you mind taking it from her? All right. You do have a few more um, seconds if you want to continue. Yes. No, that's it. We're just hoping that you uh, take into consideration. It's really, it's for the children, really, that go, are going to uh, their school. And for the people that walk in the morning, we have a lot of elderly people. And I just don't want to see anybody get hurt. Absolutely. All right. And these children here are all so well behaved. I'm so impressed with these moms and dads. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next podium on my left, your right. Is anybody coming up on this podium? No, we're going back and forth. All right. Come, just come on up. Okay. Somebody just go. <laughs> Somebody just go. Hi, good evening. What, what, my name is Michelle Camps, and I am a parent at East Point and Beach Little League. My children have been playing at these fields for the last 16 years. Um, as a previous board member early on when my older son was there, um, we were there on Monday and when the fence was going up. And contrary to what was stated, it did come as a surprise that that specific day, we had no notice that that field was going up, as well as we did not have options on where our seniors and T-ballers were. I was sitting next to the board members that were there that day, making phone calls frantically, canceling practices to identify where we were going to be able to play. The options that were provided to us was, let's go over to this empty field, and that's where they can play. Um, my child yesterday, along with his team, went over to Calusa Park, which is completely an unacceptable place. Um, there, it's a softball field. They was dangerous. Their seniors playing on short fields. Kids were throwing balls. Kids potentially were getting hurt. Um, I know one kid got hit by a ball because it was just too short of an area. I do want to say the other option that I recall that was presented to us was Boynton High. And unfortunately, Boynton High has no lights, which means we cannot play at night after school hours. So the options that were given to us as of last Monday after the fields went up, we went there for practice. The outfield was completely tore up, which means there, there is no option for us and half of our senior players that will be able to go back and have a senior season at their field. And potentially it's their last season being able to play and now we cannot play at home. We understand that the you know, construction happens, we want the improvements, we want our fields to be beautified, but there is plenty of time in off seasons that that could be accomplished and time that we don't have to interrupt our kids' seasons in order to accomplish the goals of beautifying our park. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Begin when you're ready. For those of you who don't I'm sorry, spend- sorry, could you state your name for the record first? John Reedy. Okay. For those of you who don't spend much time at the baseball field, my name is John Reedy, and I and many other volunteers are there five, sometimes six, or seven days a week. We volunteer to give back to the community and ask for nothing in return. We are helping teach the next generation sportsmanship, humility, friendship, and a sense of community. So much more than just baseball. The experiences our Little League provides for this community are priceless. But if you had to put a price on it, you could, because the city did when the park was maintained by the Little League volunteers from 2008 to 2021 where the city paid 20,000 per year from 2008 to 2018. Then it was increased to 40,000 per year from 2018 to 2021. Do you happen to know how much the maintenance cost the city in 2023? I heard it was somewhere around uh, over $800,000. Seems like this little league was able to manage the park for a huge savings to the city. Then COVID happened and ruined youth sports and volunteers were at an all time low. The city offered to take back maintaining the park with promises they would make sure the fields were in good shape. The company awarded the contract, did a very poor job, and our complaints to the city fall, fell on deaf ears once again. Much like the Little League Board's request to meet with the mayor and the city manager to discuss the planned park renovations, I ask you why would you not want to include the opinions of the volunteers who use the park most? We, thi we think after 70 years of being a nonprofit here in your city, that you, we would have a seat at the table when it came to the renovations for the fields that we 
uh, use more than anyone else. Do any of you know what the Little League fence size is for a baseball field? Anybody? 50, 70, and below, which is all the way down to T-ball, is 200 feet, is the Little League recommended field size. The fields you're building are 115 feet are only usable for T-ball. We have a lot more divisions and a lot more players than just T-ball. And we appreciate your ideas for renovating the field. However, I think we could do them a little more uh, well if you included the thoughts and the opinions of the people that know baseball and that represent baseball here in East Boynton. <clears throat> 30 more seconds. <clears throat> I was in the board meetings with the city representatives when they, we asked over and over again, when will these re re renovations start? What will be the uh, alternate plans? What else can we do? And I can tell you point blank that the answer was, we'll tell you when it comes. Well, we asked, can we have weeks and notice at hand? Can we have months? Can we wait until after the season? And we were told that all these things would happen. Come last Monday, there was no notice. We just showed up to the field and found out that the fields were fenced off. So thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, next person, some, come on up, please. State your name for the record and begin when you're ready. Cindy Falco de Corrado. Was there anyone else wanted to speak on baseball before I start bringing up other issues as well? Ms. I want to give you your Ms. time. Ms. Falco, I'm okay. sure there's more people. Okay. Well, quickly, first of all, I voted against that gentleman when he was here, and I told you that wasn't a good spot to do that, but no one listened, and I knew it would create problems for the baseball field and for these young children, and the whole area is not right for what the city wants to do, and uh, it's a lot of money, and also, if you're playing on uh, artificial turf, it gets really, really hot in the summer, and it can burn your feet, I know, because I have some, and I can attest to that. My other situation here, though, is we have lots of people I've noticed coming in from other countries. I've noticed noticed uh, about 500 strong men walking and living behind Pence Park. It's very disturbing to me that these people are coming in in semis and trucks and infiltrating into my city and no one's doing anything about it. It's actually very scary. They don't speak Haitian and they're not our American uh, heritage uh, black people. They come from another country and they're walking in fours and they're walking around and there's somebody planning bringing these people in which is going to harm all of us. I'm also very upset because I saw today another gentleman uh, pulling out a knife, pardon me, not a knife, it was an ice pick and a hammer by the um, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, not the Dunkin' Donuts, the McDonald's, walking around. There, there's danger in our streets. Okay, and I'm very dis dis disappointed about this, this situation here, that we're not being watched here. And I, as a b um, owner of a home and a, and a resident, am, am getting quite apprehensive about what's happening in our community. And then also, just the other day, there was a big bust up there on US 1 and Boynton, pardon me, Boynton Beach Boulevard. I also, when I come home off I-95, there's like eight lights that are not on. It's very dark. There's lots of spots in our community with the lights off. It's very dangerous. I, as a single, uh, and I'm not a single woman, I'm a married woman, but I go out by myself sometimes to different meetings, and it, it, it's very disheartening to think that my own community, <laughs> my taxes went up $3,000, um, they're not do, taking care of what's going on within our city. And I want to address again the 666 sign out here for the Mark of the Beast, that's a bench that no one's addressed since I brought it up. I'd like to also bring up the LGBTQT sign on the flag on the street. How long is that going to be there? Also, the, the fist that's down there for Black Lives Matters. We love all people, but this is not diversity. This is only for a certain group of people. It's not for all of us as Americans, as mothers, as fathers, as Christians, as people, Judeo-Christians, as also the Jewish uh, belief system. It's not. And when I heard the gentleman over here talking about the schools, that they're teaching the children in their native language from the countries they come from. Last time I checked, to be a citizen of the United States of America, you have to speak conversational English. Why are we doing that? You can't go to Israel and in their schools teach you your language. You have to learn Hebrew. You can't go to Italy. You have to learn Italian. Why are we doing this? Why are we catering to people to come here that we become the foreigners? I'm born and raised right here in Florida. And personally, I feel like I'm being, you know, overridden. Anyway, thank, thank you. you. Next person, next podium. Good evening. My name is Tony Senkar. I am a 24-year City of Boynton Beach resident, and both of my daughters and my son have played at East Boynton Beach Little League. My son is currently an active player in the seniors division. 
I was a league board member for several years and have coached for approximately the last eight years. I am currently a volunteer coach in the seniors division. I have spent countless hours on Saturday mornings before the sun came up pushing water off the fields, trying to get them ready for the day's games with the thought that it could be the day that a player hits a home run or creates some other form of lifelong memory. What the city is doing is not just taking away one day's worth of games, but instead a whole season's worth. I am speaking tonight on behalf of the All-Stars that the city recognized two years ago for finishing third in the state, and now they don't have a field to play on. I am speaking on behalf of the dad who told me a few months ago how excited he was that his 16-year-old son told him he wanted to come back for his final season at East Point to play with his friends and experience the feeling of joy of playing on the fields that he grew up on. I talked with the dad how the city had told us the field renovations would initially happen in the summer of 2023. And then when that, that didn't happen, they said they would begin in November of last year. I spoke with him again in mid-January and said nothing had happened, and surely the city would not allow the renovations to begin at that point, as they had told us all along the renovations would not cause us to miss a season. His son signed up and then canceled his registration once the fence went up and the field started being torn up, knowing he wouldn't be able to play his final season at East Point. I am speaking tonight on behalf of a 16-year-old player named Jacob, who is like a son to me that I have coached since he was nine years old. He is an amazing player, is homeschooled, and has only played at East Point and Beach Little League as his family has four kids and doesn't have the time to bring him all over for travel baseball. My son Hunter and Jacob have talked for months about playing together for Jacob's final season, and now that is being taken away. The city has broken their promise of not disrupting a Little League season. The city has presented time frames and plans to keep changing in favor of a privately owned facility over its own children. The city has stated that a softball field with no pitching mound or the capability to put in 90-foot bases is a viable alternative to our field one. To blame the Little League Board of Volunteers for these actions is disingenuous at best. The baseball fields are a place where no one cares about the color of your skin or if you come from a rich family or a poor family. It is just a group of players and friends who often don't even realize they are learning as much about life as they are about the game of baseball. They are learning how to be gracious in both victory and defeat, how to compete when the odds are stacked against them, and find out what they are made of when they come to bat in a key moment or when the ball comes their way at the end of a game. We don't view the kids as a potential paying customer of a training facility that many of them can't afford anyway. We don't view the field as a revenue stream to put money into private individuals or the city's pockets. We view the field as a gift from previous generations and one we had hoped to hand down to future generations of Boynton Beach children. Sadly, our current city leadership may not allow that to happen. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please state your name for the record and begin when you're ready. Ryan Masuda, thank you uh, for having us all out here tonight and uh, appreciate the commissioners up there who uh, allow us to uh, speak for the full three minutes. That's much appreciated. Um, it's wild. I see a lot of kids that I've coached here. I never expected to see us all together here at City Hall. Um, but um, yeah, obviously, I think we all share a common goal, which is we want to see better fields out there. We want to see improvements that are made. Um, but I think at least for, I'll only speak for myself, you know, I definitely have some big concerns about kind of how this is coming about. Um, I, when this was initially announced, I was excited. I was like, okay, cool. Like there's definitely some stuff that we could see improved out there. Um, but as I kind of peeled back and read a little bit more, um, definitely some red flags. And the biggest thing for me is this, this 30 year lease that we're giving to this for uh, profit. Um, entity and with 10 year interval renewals that I mean, I'm 37, like these people can control the fields until I'm 87 years old, like these kids here. I mean, that 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 to me is just a terrible deal for the city, um, let alone the fact that we're taking away facilities during an actual season for, um, you know, T-ball, but also a lot of these kids um, last seasons who are playing uh, senior ball. So one of the previous speakers kind of mentioned how we've won a US championship and I don't know if we fully appreciate that in this city. Um, you know, the Little League World Series has been played for, gosh, I believe 76 years. And I think only seven teams from Florida have made it that far. And only one from this area, it wasn't Del Rey, it wasn't Boca, it wasn't West Boynton, it wasn't West Palm, like it was us. And you know, that's really special. What takes place on those fields is extremely special. 
And, you know, a lot of coaches here give their time. A lot of parents give their time. Um, I mean, like, I'm the coach. This is going to be my third season, but so many of the parents step up too. It's not just us coaches. Like, the parents are out there. They're helping us run drills. They're helping us teach these kids, not just baseball, but, like, how to be better men, how to be better women, how to be better leaders. Like, to interrupt that and kind of have this massive disruption during the season is just so incredibly short-sighted. Um, you know, and again, just kind of thinking back to like 50 years, it's a really long time. Like I've heard some really great ideas from this city, not you all in particular, but like, hey, we're gonna become like this brewery hub. That didn't really work out. Like we're gonna revitalize downtown. Who knows how long we're gonna be waiting on that for? Like now we have this grand idea of a sports complex and I just don't want this to be another thing that like starts with a really grand plan and just fizzles horribly. And the only ones who suffer are the kids and then future generations for seriously like the greatest accomplishment in Little League Baseball in South Florida. Thank you. Hi, my name is Andrea Sordo. Um, I have three children currently who play baseball at East Boynton. Um, baseball has been a huge part of my life personally. Um, something that I heard today when the representative for the school district was speaking um, was a lot about uh, the actual classes, the courses, education, but they really didn't talk about anything with, with physical education. And I feel like East Boynton is such a vital place and a, an, extended, an extended part of a lot of our homes for these kids. Miss um, Lamb, uh, baseball is not black and white. And everything that you read to us today, I feel was completely detached from what it is to actually- Ma'am, just could you address the whole body, please? No problem. Okay. Thank you. I can speak to all of Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, can I have my time back? Just keep continue. Just okay. continue. So um, when it comes to our community, it is baseball is not black and white. We are a place that is full of color, blue and gold. It's in our hearts. We are here. We want to play. You tore up a field for small children who, and, and I have a t-baller, and he looks forward to playing baseball, and he wants to be out there to play baseball, and he has actually missed that opportunity because you guys just came and tore up the field in the middle of our season. Like, I, this is something that you guys really need to consider when it comes to signing these contracts with individuals and, and saying there's gonna be free t-ball and there's gonna be this, you don't know that. You can speak to it all you want, but East Boynton has been there and they have been providing this service. And we want to continue to be there. No one has stepped aside and said, hey, we need you guys to come in and, and do this service for us. The city has that. Allow us the opportunity to continue to thrive and to grow and to be what it is that we have proven to be. Um, I think, I don't know, I, I, I have a whole a minute left. Um, when it comes to my reach out to you personally, I know that I have tried to reach out to you on this for quite some time to try to get some clarity on what was happening because it was really unbelievable. Um, I couldn't get a hold of you to find a time to even speak to you. And I feel like that's a disservice to our community. I mean, you're telling us that we knew, we knew, we didn't know. Like nobody knew exactly when this was gonna be happening. I've heard stories about this person who is the representative of Athletic Angels who shook a person's hand and said, we will not disrupt your season. And yet here we are with a torn up field in the middle of our season. And then I see other messages from the other individual that the city wants to go ahead and make signed you know, contracts with who is literally using profanity in every public space that he enters and is making people feel uncomfortable in a sport that is like, it's America's sport, it's, it's baseball. So, I mean, wake up, do something. Good evening, my name- Feel free to bring it closer to you. Thank you. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks. Go ahead. Good evening, my name is Beth Sanzone, um, and I am actually here to talk about two proposed industrial warehouses that are going in uh, in back of my house. I'm really concerned for a lot of reasons. One is we really don't have the infrastructure to support that. Um, concerned about taxes, 
concerned about my property value going down, concerned about the noise, and I have not heard anything other than it's coming. So I would like for somebody to at least address this and give the residents a little more information around what we can expect and what you guys are gonna do to help out with all of these other issues that come with putting in two industrial size warehouses. All right, thank you. Thank you so thank much you. for your time. Let's go to the next podium. Say your name for the record and begin when you're ready. Um, what? My name is Gene Ferguson. Yep. I've lived in Boynton Beach since the early 80s. Um, first, I'd like to thank you guys for your time and for your work for the city. I come tonight with a heavy heart. Along with my heart, <clears throat> there's hundreds, if not thousands of kids a year that this will impact. <clears throat> I, would like to, I would like to give you some information and hopefully get some answers in return in the next couple days. These fields aren't just for sports. These fields are where kids learn social development skills, making lifelong friends, getting them active and constructive. There's families bonding with other families, young parents meeting older ones and sharing advice, and so much more. <clears throat> when this th whole thing started, I don't think there were many people at East Point that really cared for it, but the city pushed it hard and we went along with it. Until a few people started asking, how exactly is this going to be good for the kids at Boynton Beach? The other night on the news, <clears throat> they said the city had been communicating with the board throughout this issue. I think everybody here knows that that is not true. Board members have been calling, emailing the city officials with no answer why this is happening. The kids have already started their season. <clears throat> Information that should have been public has been hidden. Some of it is even unattainable. Why is this? <clears throat> I realize you can't fight City Hall, and I'm not here to fight. I'm here to ask for answers. Answers like, were there laws being broken? Is there something corrupt going on that we're not understanding? And more importantly, is this really best for the city's kids? So I'd like to invite you guys again to come to our opening day so you can see the hundreds of kids' faces that this will impact and their families. It's gonna be on the 9th. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank uh, a few city officials and a very few employees that have been transparent and helped us through this journey. Your sacrifice for the kids will not go unnoticed. <clears throat> With that being said, I'd like you guys to look that these people are not trash. Okay, these people are working 50, 60 hour work weeks, coming to the fields, and then putting 20, 30 hours in to help these kids. And you guys are just dumping on them. It's really sad. Thank you guys. Good evening. Hi, my name's Jared Ryan, uh, seven year. Uh, resident of Boynton Beach. This is my uh, fifth year now volunteering in the league. I have a T-baller who's enjoying his first season. I have a nine-year-old who also plays in kid pitch, has been part of the East Boynton system since he was a four-year-old. Um, what's going on here is not right. It's kind of despicable and, and it just stinks. And what's been going on with this third party that's gonna be involved on taking away the fields from the kids and these people who have been here for years. You know, I, I'm, I've only been a resident for seven years and I can see the type of community that East Boynton involves and these people, you know, enjoy this field and we need this field. And how it all went down when I just heard someone say that the permits were just given in December of 23. Okay, now that's halfway through our registration. We had over 100 kids signed up for baseball at that point when permits were given. So now you're telling us 
that we cannot play baseball after we had already promoted our season for the spring, collected money from residents, and now permits were given in December for this project, and we weren't even notified. Because if we were notified, I've been a board member for two years, we would have told our parents and our community, hey, this is what was going on. But we didn't know. And then we show up on a Monday, and all of a sudden there's a fence around the fields where my kid has to now go to Calusa, and my nine-year-old's on the kid pitch field at the same time trying to play baseball. So how do I get my t-ball over to Calusa, where there's no, there's no pitch and mound, there's no proper bases? It's a nightmare. All right, and like I said, this whole thing just stinks. And I don't know where it started from or who it is, but it ain't the people here, and it's not us as people who are trying to enjoy some baseball. And you guys should honestly, the history that this league has and what happened in 2003 is unbelievable. And the fact that the city doesn't even acknowledge that and has let the fields get to where they're at after what happened in 2003, that's on you guys, and that's a disgrace. Honestly, that's a disgrace, okay? Because we are Little League champions. You know how difficult that is to become a Little League champion? How hard it was for those kids in 2003 to get to where they, they got to? And they're, not, and they're gonna tear down the one thing that they have, a little plaque that's on the field over there? They were US champions from East Boynton Beach 20 years ago. Like, come on, it's not okay. Step it up and do the right thing. And the other thing is, how we, in the middle of the field, they ripped it up yesterday. So the timing of that, you're telling me that they ripped it up the day before, all these people are gonna come to a meeting and protest? I wonder why they tore up that outfield yesterday. Thank you. Next person, please state your name for the record, begin when you're ready. My name is Tiara Rogers, and I'm a parent of two kids who play at East Point in Little League. Um, I want to like just give you a different perspective. Um, I'm not going to read from anything. I'm incredibly nervous, also very upset. I'm from Kentucky, and we moved here three years ago. We got off of a plane on April 2nd. My kids were playing at East Point on April the 3rd. These people worked with me when we were in Kentucky in a very bad situation. They worked with me. They made sure they were registered. They made sure they were good uniforms. They sent my kids messages, videos, everything to make sure that when we got here, they were comfortable, they were good to go. The first day at the field, we were greeted by parents. What can we do to help you get settled? How can we help you? That's what this is. Every single one of these people here, they're family. They're my family. I don't have a lot of family. These people are it for me. Okay. I was in a wreck two weeks ago, January 16th. The first people I text with my kids in the car, my toddler, my T-ballers, were these people. We're in a wreck. I need help. Can somebody grab my other child from school? They were there. The Fergusons showed up. They were there. They stayed with my husband. Jean followed me to the hospital with my son. This is family, and what you all are doing is gross. Additionally, the person that you all are working with, I'm not gonna name him, but I do wanna read this to you. Um, I expressed on social media that I think he's a despicable human being. I think that he is hateful. I think that he's prideful. I think he does nothing for the betterment of anybody else but himself. And I told him this, I'm not happy about what he's doing. I think it's all for profit. And I do agree that I think someone is benefiting from it because you all don't seem to be getting it. But this is what he had to say about the field. Show some balls. I heard about you in the train. Speaking of me, a married woman, okay? A train. If you don't know what it is, look it up. It's gross, okay? Goodbye. See you at groundbreaking. LMFAO, losers. I win. You lose. I got the lease, and the trash will be gone soon. You're a part of the trash. That is one of the people that you all have a contract with. One of the people. What is it about this field that is so important to you? Because to me, you're putting the safety of these kids, like you're putting a dollar amount on their safety. That's not cool. 
It's gross. Like, you all should be better than this. We're telling you, and you're not listening. And it's going to take something bad happening before you get it. We're trying to tell you. Hey, ma'am, ma'am, can you meet me in the back? I want to know who said that. Next person. Good evening. My name is Jessica Ferguson, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with me. I think I've spoken with every, every one of you at least a couple of times. We've sat in meetings. Um, and I, I want to address some of the things that were shared in regards to communication. Communication was one of the things that I've stressed from the very beginning when I started getting involved at East Point and Little League in regards to with the city and the plans that were happening. There was none. I've, till this day, have not received the exact plan of the project plan of when exactly you guys were going to start construction. I sat in front with Gail. I sat with Casey, who's over there in the back. I sat with Frankie. And they kept saying, just do business as usual. We'll let you know. Okay, well, what's going to happen when you guys decide to break ground? We're not going to interrupt you. Well, I need to have a backup plan because if something does happen, where am I going to have all these people here go and attend their practices? Don't worry about it. It's not going to get there. We're not going to interrupt your season. And here we are, season interrupted. Here we are. Yes, you guys gave us a field. Did you know when we got the field? On January 29th. January 29th, Mike and I, frantically looking, I just got the permit approved with the Palm Beach County uh, Parks and Recreation to get use of the field. It wasn't before. I planned. People, <laughs> East Point knows I'm a planner. I like to know the when, the why, the how, because I don't like to be left displaced. I don't like to leave my families displaced. And that's what they are. They're my family. I have little T-ballers that say, Miss Jess, Miss Jess, can I come visit you at your home? Because they truly believe that I live in that concession stand. <laughs> They really do. And, and, and that's because that's how much time and effort and love I show for East Boy. And I truly do bleed blue and gold through and through. And I am here to stand for them. And it's just a little sickening, a little sickening that you're throwing it back on us, that it's our fault that we're here today. We didn't sign that contract. We didn't agree to that contract. We weren't even told about the contract until after it was signed. And that is a true fact. And I'm more than happy to share that in writing because I do have it in an email. You guys visited us at East Point and Little League, showed us the plans. Again, the plans were already out. And again, Casey can attest to that. He was there. He came and showed us the plans. You guys asked for our feedback. We've shared numerous emails and communication and saying, this isn't right. The fence isn't tall enough. The fields aren't big enough. We need this. We need that. Why are we losing dugouts? Or, I'm sorry. Why are we losing batting cages? Why are the batting cages smaller? And you keep telling us, well, we're going we're gonna, to you know, fix the plans. We're going to you know, update the plans, and then we'll show you. We still have not seen those updated plans. All right, thank you. Can I continue if they give me their time? No, it's three minutes per person. I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to speak. However, if somebody wants to piggyback on what she's saying, three, per three minutes per person. All right. Begin, begin when you're ready and state your name for the record. Good evening. My Good name evening. is Jacqueline Sla. I, I am a native. I'm sorry. One I'm, second. Ma'am, oh, ladies and gents, sorry. can you please give her the same respect? All right. Thank you. B please thank begin. You. Yep. My name is Jacqueline Sly. I am a native Boynton Beach resident. And as I attempt to, put, to talk to you tonight, I have my senior 13 year old who can't play on his field, a field I played on. He can't finish out his season because you guys are in business with somebody who, the last time I spoke at this meeting, I received threatening threats from. So I was hesitant to speak tonight. I have two other boys that have played at East Point and still currently play at East Pointon. I grew up being told the city doesn't care about East Pointon because they want it for the cemetery. But that's how I was raised in the city, because the city back then didn't care. And I would tell my children that, yeah, they always wanted to take the fields for the cemetery. But no, that's not happening right now. Don't worry, you'll always have your fields. I was there for the extreme home makeover. 
I was painting, I was building, I didn't even have children. But that was the community that we are. We all came out for those kids. I was at Pete Rose watching those games. We all supported ourselves. I'm sure half of you were there too. I see him shaking his head. We were in support. This is our family. It has been for the last eight years. If you call me, I'm usually at a baseball field. East Point is where he fell in love with baseball and has had the opportunity to play travel, play at East Point, play middle school. He is now will have the opportunity to play in high school. What you're doing by taking away this field and blaming our volunteer board members, Jessica lives at the field, by the way, okay, they would have told us. They would have said it. I asked questions at that initial meeting that you had, and not one of you could answer me. Not one of you could answer where the funding was coming from. Not one of you could answer how this was going to affect our kids. You didn't care. You still are not caring right now. That's the reason we're here. You know, I wasn't sure if I was going to come tonight. He wanted to come. And these are his senior teammates up here looking at you and asking, why are you doing this to them? They want to know why. Why is it so important for this turf field to be built right now? Why can't it be built in the summer? Why right now? <laughs> These boys have been playing together for years. They see each other. Everybody in this room, they know, everyone knows each other. We are family. We are East Boynton. And as everyone always says, East is beast, because that's what we are. Thank you. All right, next person. Again, we do have two podiums if you want to form a line for both of them. I would like to concede. Please state your name rest, for the record. Uh, my, my name is Eric Fraga. I would like to concede my three minutes to Jessica Ferguson so she can continue because she has a lot of valid points that need to be heard. Uh, sir, we, that's not something we do. Those are not within our rules. Okay. But if you want to piggyback, feel free to piggyback. I'm, your time is running. Uh, basically, all I have to say is uh, the community here is fantastic. I've been, my son's been in the league since T-ball. I've been volunteering as a coach uh, or, or assistant coach and stuff in the league. Uh, if you look at the stats, most little leagues across the country in many cities and towns are going under. There's a lot of empty fields in this country. Overgrown grass, not maintained. The leagues are gone. They're evaporating. This league is thriving. It's growing every year. Okay? We're getting larger every year. All right? As far as what you guys are doing, is, it, it's hurtful. It's, it's very hurtful. I mean, you, you basically are up here. You're supposed to be here to serve us, to serve the people, to help the people. Instead, you're creating a wall. You're not letting these kids enjoy growing up, turning into men and young women. All right? It's not just about the baseball. It's, it's the camaraderie. All right? My son's best friends. He's been with since T-ball. It's a close-knit group. All right? I don't want my son, all right, we have enough problems in this country with no fishing signs, no trespassing signs, no skating signs. You can't do anything. Now you guys are going to freaking put up a sign and say no freaking baseball. What, you want to just lock every kid in this country in a room so you can just stare at a computer screen all day and play video games? Is that the future you want for our kids? It's crap, man. So I, I really hope you guys consider everything that you've heard here tonight because it's, it's not right. Next speaker. Good evening. My name is Barbara Reedy. I think you guys know who I am. How many times have I spoken on this topic? And here we are. Um, no matter how many times the city staff can try to tell you that they allowed East Boynton Little League to participate in the planning of this, I don't believe that's true. I think you'd be hard pressed to show us where on the plan things were changed or fixed or tweaked that was something that had been affected by the Little League Board. If due diligence had been done and questions had been asked before this commission was pressured into agreeing to these two projects, I think we would not be here tonight. I think that 
it would be a different outcome because you would have realized that you were being pressured. And it was an unnecessary pressure because the improvements that these two private people are offering that are tagged as improvements, were they improvements that Little League asked for? No. Is, are they improvements that Little League needs? No. We need the crabgrass fixed. We need the clay aerated. We need, we need a t-ball field. That's a little dinky t-ball field. That's what we need, okay? But if someone had asked before you signed the contracts, we would not be here tonight doing this, okay? Those Little League fields, the, the whole Little League program has been taken for granted for many, many years. I did my 10 years at the field 25 years ago, and they speak about family. Nothing could be more true. Why am I here 25, after, 25 years after I did my 10 years? Okay, and I'm still here advocating for those fields. That's how precious they are. It's not too late to change some of this. It's not too late. There are clauses. I read the contracts. I read the lawsuits. I know where you can, there are things, there are avenues. There are avenues. These, fan, these people just got their first lesson for free from Michael Barwis. And unfortunately, it was a lesson in heartlessness. And I'm not too sure many of them will be back to see Michael Barwis for some more lessons. Next person. Hello, my name is Krista Silverman. Um, I am a mother of two and also a board member. Um, we've been at the field for four years now, and my youngest is now in T-ball. Um, everyone has brought up really great points, um, but also a thing that, that hasn't been brought up is the risk that it poses of my child being not with me if I have to be in two places at once. I'm a single mom. I don't really have a lot of support. Luckily, I have my mom sometimes to help me, but I'm the one who takes my kids. I'm the one who's at the field. I'm also, you know, concessions manager. So I have to be in three places at once with my t-baller, with my coach pitch, and in concessions. That's impossible. You know, and I actually have to be on the field with my t-baller because he's special needs. I have to be there with him as he's practicing as he's on the field. And I can't do that if he's <laughs> supposed to be practicing in Calusa or some other inadequate field. It, it's, it's, it's wrong, you know? It's also, you know, for, for, I have to pick and choose which one I wanna do or which one is going to practice or play that time. And it's not fair because my oldest, he's been doing this for four years. My youngest, I'm trying to get him started into it. He loves it. He was a little skeptic at first, but he loves being on the field now. And he's just now wanting to play with other kids and, and um, you know, being receptive to his coach. And, and that's being taken away because I can't, I can't take him to multiple places. I can only be at one place, in which is what we also all paid our registration for is for that field. You know, it's like, are we going to be refunded by the city? Because this isn't an East Boynton Little League issue. This was a city issue. And it's, it's not right. But thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name's Harry Woodworth. 40-year Boynton Beach resident, director of Inca. Uh, like everyone here and all of you, all I want to do is be really proud to say I live in Boynton Beach when I talk to my friends. I've lived here 40 years. I have never in my life been more embarrassed for the city than I am. We're standing right here right now. And I'm not here to point fingers. I'm not going to blame anybody. I don't think there's any malice. There's no conspiracy. There are just lots simpler explanations for things that go this foul off the line. And this is ridiculous. 
So why am I here? I don't want to blame fingers. I don't, I don't point fingers, blame anybody. It's a new year. Haven't we had enough of this? Lawsuits, internal conflict. You guys took a course last year from a guy named Lyle Sadik, I think I'm pronouncing that correct, on strategy, uh, governance, leadership, things like that. 10 or, seven, 10 or 12 sessions, they were awesome. Okay, one of the things that he covered was the purpose of the city. The first slide up was Boynton Beach as a team. Anybody feel like a team tonight? Okay. The second slide up was about the difference between politics and governance. Politics was getting reelected. Governance was taking care of the needs of the people and the citizens and the residents. How's that going for us? I guess what I'm asking here is, Maybe we could make a difference. Maybe we could reset this thing. You know, if the doors fall off, you park the airplanes for a couple of weeks and figure it out. You guys had the training. That guy's still available. You got all the way through the training to the part where there was a mission statement, strategies and goals, things that motivate people, that pull us together. And that's where it stopped. There was no follow-up. Did we get the mission statement? I can't find it. Did we get a strategy? Do we have strategy? No, I haven't seen it. Do we have plans to implement the strategies? Haven't seen those either. But you know what? We pulled a budget together with no strategy and no plans to achieve it. How did we do that? And the way we're going, we're going to do it that way. The whole purpose of the exercise is to represent the citizens. That's the only reason you're up there, to serve the citizens. That's not what's happening here tonight. Let's reset this thing. Let's stop all this crap. Let's refocus. You know how to do it. The information is readily available. People have been running cities and companies for a thousand years successfully. We are not on the right track with this city right now, and this needs to change. And I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about governance. Thank you. Hey, good evening. My name one second. There we go. We're on. Restart my time. There yeah. we go. My name's Adam Lim. I'm a local resident. I have two kids in the league. Um, I do a lot of coaching, football, baseball, soccer, you name it. And I've been around a lot of leagues, including uh, ones in Boca, ones in Wellington, ones in West Boynton. And we've been at East Boynton the longest uh, along my family because it's a well-run league. You've got a little treasure here in what you have in this city here. People come from if they can meet the eligibility requirements, they come here to play. So you've got something here. Um, my background is I'm a, I was a US Army veteran. I was an engineer. Um, I was a combat engineer, platoon leader in Afghanistan. And the most fun I had, the best engineer job I ever had was the last two years in the Army when I had a construction budget. I had a $350 million construction budget. I know how public-private relationships can work in, in, in the government sector, right? I also know how to run a project. I know one of the key things when you're running a project is to have key stakeholder input, right? I'm not gonna sit up here and say all the things that have already been said about you know, the atrocities we feel are being done to the league, that's been covered. I think it's safe to admit we lost some key stakeholder buy-in from your key tenant at the field. Would we agree? I see the mayor shaking his head. Thank you, sir. So I'm a results type guy. I'm not gonna tell you how I feel and all that, I'd like action starting tonight. So do me a favor. If you're up here and you're willing to fix the problem, raise your hand. One, two. So. <clears throat> Sir. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, one second. I have paused his time. I want you to have your time, sir. Uh, but on the advice of counsel, we've been asked not to comment, even by hand. Yes, sir, All Mr. Right, Pinsker. I understand continue. that. So, sometimes, right, ladies and gentlemen, let, let let the gentleman finish. Let him finish, Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor. All right, please please continue. Sir, I lived in a world where I had to make quick decisions under legal action as well, and sometimes you raise your hand. Sometimes you just do it because you got to be a leader. So I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. I'm gonna ask one more time, one more time for you to raise your hand if you're ready to resolve this starting tonight, if you are of that mind. And if you're not, my next thing is, I hate politics, I hate it. But watch what happens when you don't raise your hand. Right. Now raise your hand. 
Show me. We had two hands. My record shows two hands. Mr. Mayor, do you want to reconsider raising your hand? Be a leader. Be a leader, man. Sir, I'm willing to speak with you offline, but I will not be put into a position, okay? Because it's not about performing or acting. For those of you that I have spoken, they know exactly where I'm coming from. But because of advice of counsel, it is the proper and appropriate thing to do. So please continue. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to let the gentleman finish. All right. I got what I needed. Thank you both. All right, next person, please state your name for the record and begin. Uh, Coach Ed Novak. I've been at East Boyan probably five years now. It's, it's my home. I started off my son, he was in T-ball and I was never more mad from my wife to, for signing me up for something I didn't want to do <laughs> until I met these people at East Boyan who opened my eyes to the possibility of a person. I came from, I'm not a Floridian, I'm an out-of-towner from Pennsylvania. I came down here 10 years ago to change my life, and I like to think I did so. And I met all these beautiful people here that became my family, and that stand behind me no matter what. My best friend I have today is my assistant coach. Because I met him at this league. His, his kids sleep in my house. I, my kids sleep at their house. This means so much to me. I coach Coach Pitch. I'm a head coach for Coach Pitch. I'm also a head coach for these guys right here, these T-ballers that you just took the field away from. It just breaks my heart that I can't give my daughter the same stuff that I gave my son coming up in this league because now I have to try to find a field at Calusa Park with my, my other assistant coaches over here to try to make stuff work and I can't I'm running I would our fields were right next to each other it, I would literally coach two teams at the same time believe it or not people it's possible but I can't do it now because I got to go to a different field I'm not saying much all I'm saying is just do the right thing and give us our fields back and let us let us just continue to build a community a legacy yeah for, for our families. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Please, you can bring the mic closer to you. All right, state your name for the record. I'm Trey Wasco. Micah Ferguson. Dylan Fraga. Please let us play. Boynton, please do better. We just want to play baseball. We are 223 players and see all play baseball and have been in all-star teams and would like to keep on playing and representing East Boyne. We've played here ever since we were T-ballers and all love baseball. All of us have grown up here and played, and now we're playing travel baseball thanks to East Boyne. And I meant all them from baseball. Yeah. No, three, two, one. Please do better, East Boyne. Next person. Good evening. Um, my name is Maria Luker. Um, I stand before you today as a concerned mother, team mom, and board member because according to your rules, we aren't allowed to express our true underlying issues with the projects happening at East Boynton. So I'll do my best to express why these fields mean so much to us and why we don't want these projects to happen. I've been coming to East Boynton since I was six. I spent years watching my friends play, and even though I didn't know him then, my husband grew up on those fields as well. Now he coaches on those same fields he played on as a kid. My uncle played professionally for 13 years, so my life re revolved around baseball since I was very young. Little League is so much more than baseball, and the historic fields that have housed Little League World Series champs and professional baseball players deserve so much more than being sold to the highest bidder. Because baseball is a lifestyle, we are a family, and we are worth so much more than that. My son has been playing baseball at East Boynton since he was four years old. He's now eight and our life continues to revolve around baseball. He plays seven days a week now with travel. We live, eat, and breathe baseball. And while some may say that's crazy, he maintains good grades in school, enjoys reading, writing stories, and keeping his room clean during his downtime. I credit all of that to baseball. 
Baseball provides more than just a fun game with friends. It provides structure that most kids, let's be honest, in this society lack. <clears throat> it teaches patience, cooperation, and trust. For some kids, this is their literal safe space away from bullying that they're getting in school. They also learn how to lose, and along the way, they win in so many ways. This is our kids' safe space to make friends and learn some of my most important lessons, that family comes first. Our East Boynton family is strong, and we're so happy to call it home. Please give us our fields back so we can maintain and nurture it the way it deserves. <clears throat> we have a new, much younger generation of parents who are volunteering, and we want the responsibility back. We love what we do, and we wouldn't be here tonight if we didn't. When the city of Boynton visited our fields and asked for our feedback, I specifically asked, what are we doing about this third party person who is threatening and mothers and children when no one is looking? And I was told we're not here to talk about insert person's name. Unfortunately, since this department is not holding true to their department core mission or upholding your core services, we ask that we get our fields back. You don't push these projects through and you make this stop. The kids just wanna play. Thank you. All right, is there anyone else who would like to speak that's in the chambers? All right, so please form a line. Let's begin with you. But please make it known that you'd like to speak by forming a line. Hello? All right. How you doing, Commission? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Commissioners. Uh, this is my son, Brody. I uh, played for East Boynton Beach uh, Little League from coach pitch to seniors. Sir, could you state your name for the record? I'm sorry. Oh, Please my name is Kevin name. Cox. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, during that time, I coached and volunteered cutting the grass and uh, pushing massive amounts of water off of the field in preparation for the kids to play. Uh, the, the payment that I asked for for that was just to get to watch my son play baseball with his friends and play the game. I've lived here for in Boynton for 22 years, go to church in Boynton, and I work in Boynton. I'm here tonight to echo the concerns of the uh, people in the room tonight. I ask the commission uh, to reassess the current situation um, and reevaluate. Please don't turn East Point Beach Little League into Moneyball. Uh, keep it a blue and gold community. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I see no one else approaching the podium. We still have people online, uh, but I want to make last call for in-person public comments. Going once, going twice. All right, in-person public comments is now closed. Thank you, everyone. We do have two individuals online. It, the first person is Mark Forgione. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, Mark, can you hear me? Mark, you're there. We are testing a new IT system, so please bear with us. Going once, going twice. All right, we're going to move on to the next person. I'll check back on Mark in a few minutes. We have another Mark, Mark Meyer from Boyne Beach. Mark, um, please begin by stating your name for the record, and I'll let you know when you have 30 seconds remaining on the clock. Mark? All right. IT, do we have either Mark? Okay, that was a no. With that, public comment online is now closed. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to voice your concerns. We heard you loud and clear. We have taken note, and we will proceed thereafter. All right, thank you so much, everyone. We are going to proceed with the next portion of the Hold agenda. On. Yes, Vice Mayor? I want to address some things that have been sure, said. Sure, sure. So, so, wait, wait, everyone. If, everyone. if I can get everyone. There's two things I want to address. First, there has been uh, proposals in previous commission meetings by certain individuals in this room to expand the cemetery to dissolve the Little League fields. Okay? Uh, individuals spoke earlier. I will tell you now, as long as I'm here, and I would imagine that my colleagues would support me, that will never be allowed. We will never expand the cemetery to dissolve the Little League fields. So I want to nick that rumor in the butt now. That is not going to happen. The second thing is I want to hear about where we're at with the 
uh, agreement with Primetime Sports? And what action has the city taken recently? All right, one second. So ladies and gentlemen, this is technically not on the agenda, but I'm happy to entertain it. Um, is there a motion to amend the agenda for discussion? All right, is there a second to add this for discussion? Going once, going twice. I'm looking for a second to add for discussion so we can have a conversation about this. I think that we should have some conversations with our city manager and our city attorney after tonight's meeting and find ways to address the concerns that have been brought up today and find solutions for those concerns. But I don't know if right now would be the ideal way to do it, although it is um, obviously important and we thank everyone for showing up. We understand it's a very, very sensitive time and it's, it's been very tough on the families and I wholeheartedly understand and I empathize with your situation. Um, at the same time, I do wanna give a chance to our city manager and our city attorney to have those discussions internally and then we can get back to all of you um, and we will. Excuse me. Excuse. All right, thank you everyone. Um, with that, if there is no second, we're gonna proceed with the agenda, but I do wanna echo the comments that have been made. I do look forward to having that conversation with the city manager and the city attorney. Okay, I understand uh, that you may need time to prepare some things, so I will circle back with both of you and uh, we'll have that discussion soon. All right, all right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Hay, were you about to chime in or? No, I just concur with you. Uh, my heart really goes out to the parents. I've been here before. I also coached uh, myself uh, Little League football, and we've had situations like this, but I do want to move forward uh, correctly and uh, make sure that there's nothing going to bite us in the real. So I, I, I do look forward to that conversation uh, with legal and the city manager so that uh, I can make the right decision based on the information that I have. All right, thank you everyone. We're gonna continue, okay? The next portion of the agenda is administrative. Uh, this portion of the agenda is called advisory board appointments. I'm going to pull up the list so we can go over the list. Mayor. Do we want to take a five minute recess to let them yeah, I would exit? Concur. I it's would agree. Yeah. Let's take a five minute recess. Five minute All right, break. thank you everyone. Can IT please turn off the uh, microphones and cameras? Thank you. This is the five minute recess.
This meeting is reconvened. We have just returned from a recess. The next portion of the agenda, as a reminder, is administrative. These are the appointments to our advisory boards. Uh, if you pull up the list, we have no applicants, so we have openings in the Building Board of Adjustments and Appeals, openings in the Employees Pension Plan Board of Trustees, Education and Youth Advisory Board, the Library Board, and the Senior Advisory Board. For this evening, we have two applicants for the Recreation and Parks Board. The first one is a nomination from Commissioner Hay. Commissioner Hay, this is for the regular seat. There are two applicants, Thomas Devlin and Matthew McMullum, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Would you like to make a nomination? Yes, uh, I would like to nominate uh, Matthew as a regular. Okay, all right, so do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Um, are there any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion to appoint Matthew McMullum to the regular position on the Recreation and Parks Board say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion passes unanimously. Um, Commissioner Kelly, you have the nomination for the alternate. Would you like to make a nomination? Yes, I will uh, nominate Thomas uh, Devlin to the alternate. Position. Thank you. Is there a second to that? Okay. We have a second. I'm not sure. I think it was Commissioner Hay who said it first. Uh, are there any objections or comments with that? We have a motion to approve. We have the motion. Huh? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those who oppose say no. The ayes have it. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations uh, to both of those individuals. Okay. Moving on to the next portion. This is community support funds. We have a community support fund request from Vice Mayor Turkin. Vice Mayor, did you want to say a few words about what it is, what it is for? Um, it's travel week. Okay. Probably would have been better if we brought it up, you know, maybe before public comment. Okay. But, uh, yeah. All right. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Is there a second to his request? Second. We have a second from Commissioner Hay. All those in favor of the request say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations and congratulations to that tribal league group. Moving on to consent agenda, are there any items that my colleagues would like to pull from the consent agenda? We have several big items, but uh, I know that you've had a chance to review them already. Any requests to pull? Hearing none. All right, may I have a motion to approve the uh, consent agenda? Oh, second. I heard a motion from Commissioner Cruz. I heard a second from Commissioner Kelly. All those in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda say aye. 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 All those who oppose, the ayes have it. Motion passes unanimously. That approves the consent agenda. We're moving on to consent bids and purchases over $100,000. Are there any items here that you would like to pull? Uh, I just want to note that we did mention earlier that item 7D was the item with the Scribner's error, which our council has already uh, stated and corrected. Are there any items you'd like to pull here? Hearing none, may have a motion to approve consent bids and purchases. Second. We had a motion from Commissioner Cruz. I heard a second from Vice Mayor Turkin. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those oppose, the ayes have it. Motion passes unanimously. We're now moving on to the next portion of the agenda, which is public hearing. Uh, this is pertaining to uh, the Cottage District project. We have a proposed ordinance and the three related items that go along with it. We have the variance, the master plan, a new site plan, and the major site plan, the new major site plan. So let's turn now to the clerk. I'm sorry, for council, did you wanna make any opening comments? Uh, what about, let's, let's do the disclosures component, and um, yes. let's, I, I don't care where we begin, maybe. You will now have a laminated sheet in front of you with the oh, disclosures on you. it. May Lee delaminated that for everyone. Thank you, May Lee. Make sure you it. keep it at your, um, area for next meeting, thank you. Okay, that, that, this is helpful. Let's begin with Commissioner Kelly. Do you have any um, disclosures to make pertaining to the Cottage District projects? Um, as to this matter, I have had ex parte communications with Matthew Barnes sorry. from WCI. I'm sorry, and Commissioner Tommy Kelly, can Carlson. you uh, identify which matter, whether it's A, B, C, or D? Or are you gonna do them individually? Oh, the mayor said Cottage District, so I- Oh, I'm I sorry, was, I, I apologize. We'll do them, them one together. at a time. Are, They're all can, related can, items. Okay, wanna, yeah, can we lock okay, well, so except a, for D. I want to clarify, you're only doing A, B, and C, and when we get to D, I'm we'll sorry. do. Right, right. right. Yes. A, B, and C. Can we do it that sorry. way? I just want to make sure we're clear, yes. Absolutely. So Thank this is for A, B, and C, which are all related items. Okay. All right. We Thank you, clarity. Mayor. Thank you for that. Um, Commissioner, go ahead. Do you want me to start over? Yes. 
Um, as to this matter, I have had ex parte communications with Matthew Barnes at WCI and Ame Carlson with Pulte. I have received uh, emails as well from the same individuals or their representatives. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit. I have not received expert opinions. I request these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Hay? As pertaining to these three items, I have not uh, had excommunication. I have received email uh, from the Pulte Group. I have not uh, conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit, and I have not received expert opinion. I request that these disclosures and all written communication be made part of the record. All right, thank you. Um, as for me, as to this matter, which is item 8A, B, and C, I have had ex parte communications with Andrew Maxey, Ame Carlson, uh-oh, I missed the, what was the name of the third person? You got it. Could you tell, could you say your name one more time? Sorry. Matthew Barnes. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate that. Um, I have received written communications in the form of emails. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit, and I have not received expert opinions outside of those three individuals. I request that these disclosures and all written record uh, communications be made part of the record. Thank you so much. Uh, Vice Mayor. As to this matter, I have received um, export communications via email um, from Andrew. Andrew, sorry I didn't get back to you. As you can see, we're pretty busy this last week. Um, I have had uh, received written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit. I have not received expert um, opinions outside of st city staff um, based on some emails that came through today. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be part made of the record. Be made part of the record, pardon me. All right, thank you, Commissioner Cruz. As to this matter, I have had ex parte communications with representatives from Paul T and GWI. I have not received, I have received uh, written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit. And yes, I have received expert opinions from city staff and um, individuals from FPNL who spoke to city staff after our conversations. Thank you. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. All right, thank you. Uh, we are going to hear uh, the presentation again in bulk because they are all related items. However, we will vote on each item separately. The first one is the proposed ordinance at second reading. We will have public comment, and I'm going to turn now to the city clerk uh, for reading of the, the title. Actually, if you could swear on the witnesses oh, yes. and then read Let's the titles. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone that is here to speak on items A through C, please stand up, or A through D, all of at the same time? Yeah, we can do Okay. Um, on items A through D, please stand up and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All right. You may have a seat. All right. Thank you, City Clerk. If you could begin with the reading. Proposed Ordinance 24-001, second reading, an ordinance of the City of Boynton Beach, Florida, amending Ordinance 02-013 to rezone a parcel of land described herein and commonly referred to as the Pulte Cottage District from the single and two-family residential R2 to infill planned unit de development in providing for conflicts, severability, and effective date. B is approved the request for a variance from part three, chapter four, article 13, section two, required sustainable development standards, table two dash one, electric charging stations requirement for the Pulte Cottage District, generally located between Northeast Fifth Avenue and Northeast Fourth Avenue, and between Seacrest Boulevard and Northeast First Street. Uh, applicant is Amy Carlson uh, from the Pulte Group. And then C is to approve the request for the new master plan and new site plan for the Pulte Cottage District for 19 single family units and 22 townhome units, proper, property generally located between Northeast 
5th Avenue and Northeast 4th Avenue and between Seacrest Boulevard and Northeast 1st Street. Applicant is Amy Carlson from Pulte Group. All right, thank you. Uh, let's begin with that proposed ordinance 24-001, second reading. We will have public comment. I, is there anyone from the board that would like to hear the item again from staff? And a request? Okay, makes things go a little bit faster. Um, is there anything else from council that changed? Uh, same thing? It, were there changes? Yeah. Yes. There were, okay. Only on Let's have staff then update <clears throat> the board. All right, uh, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. My name is Andrew Meyer, Senior Planner, and I will be going over the Pulte Cottage District uh, request. Uh, just a couple updates, real brief. Um, I'm gonna grab the remote real quick. Uh, the request includes a rezoning from R2 to IPUD, a new master plan and site plan for 19 single family units and 22 townhome units, and a variance from the sustainable development standards requirement for electric charging stations. Uh, the applicant has requested the modification of two engineering and public works conditions of approvals, specifically conditions number three and number five. Condition number three is suggested to read as follows. Uh, utilities, including but not limited to power and light, telecommunications, water, sewer, wiring to street lights and gas located within the property and along the perimeter of the property shall be installed underground in accordance with the current engineering design handbook and construction standards. The developer shall make necessary costs and other arrangements for such undergrounding installations with each of the persons, firms, or corporations furnishing utility service involved. Should the undergrounding of Florida Power and Light utilities be deemed infeasible by FPL, the developer shall provide a cost estimate from a professional engineer for the required undergrounding and submit a payment in lieu of undergrounding totaling the full expense required to complete the project at time of permitting. Uh, condition number five is suggested to read as follows. The owner and uh, owner slash developer shall coordinate a developer's agreement with the city to mill and overlay the full width of the following roadways. Northeast 1st Street from Northeast 4th Avenue to Northeast 5th Avenue, including the full intersections thereof, and Northeast 4th Avenue from Seacrest Boulevard to Northeast 1st Street, and Northeast 5th Avenue from Seacrest Boulevard to Northeast 1st Street. The city may contribute to the cost of the mill and overlay project for the portions not strictly required by the land development regulations. Uh, with the proposed modifications to the aforementioned conditions of approval, staff recommends approval of the requests. Uh, staff and the applicant is available to answer any questions you may have. All right, thank you. All right, are there any questions or comments? Let's begin with Commissioner Cruz. Anything for staff? I've had plenty of discussions about the uh, FPNL situation with several staff members, so I don't have any further questions. Thank All right. you. Thank you, Commissioner. Vice Mayor, questions, comments? Nope. I think staff clarified the uh, the amended proposal, and it seems like they're supporting it, so I'm good to go. All right. Commissioner Hay? Uh, no questions. No questions. I had mine answered at the uh, first reading. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Kelly? I don't have any questions for staff at this time. I would like to um, hear from the applicant as far as their agreement with what staff is recommending. So All thank right. you. Sounds good. And with that, I guess we're finished. Uh, we may have some follow-up questions. Uh, we have a request to hear from the applicant if one of the representatives could come up. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, Matthew Barnes, Senior Project Manager with WGI. We are in agreement with um, to, to change conditions, yeah. Was that, com Commissioner, anything else? No, that's, okay. I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page, um, so thank you. Great, yeah, thank you. Great, uh, with that, if there's nothing else from the board and we've heard from both uh, parties, let's go to public comment on this item, okay? Public comment is now specifically on uh, the ordinance here. One second, let me switch to the timer. All right, state your name and begin when you're ready. 
Thank you, Susan Oyer. Um, as the one landowner that all of this project will be abutting, and I'm kind of the one who takes the point on um, all, all the stuff with our, our property there, um, no one has reached out to me, and I will say that, and I, I understand that there's probably communication amongst other family members, but no one's reached out to me, and yet I'm the one who comes to these meetings and you have to listen to. So maybe at some point somebody should have talked to me. Um, um, I am concerned. I have no problem with the electric car chargers. Thank you, Commissioner Kelly, for explaining what was going on with that. I'm sorry I've been out of the country for a few weeks and been you know, horribly sick afterwards. So I, I missed a lot of this, and I'm sorry. Um, so my big issues are the lights you're putting up. I certainly hope they're going to be warm white lights. I've had this discussion when on P&D years ago when we got the rules changed that all lights should be warm white lights, and I certainly hope that's going to happen for this neighborhood. There are medical reasons why you need to have warm white lights, and um, I'll be happy to discuss it any time with anyone. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at the plants. <coughs> Sorry. Very well. Um, just the input I've seen and gotten is that this is a cottage district and you're putting in houses that don't have a cottage architectural style. You have cottage houses across the street. You are abutting and surrounding my properties, which are without a doubt cottage style because they're 90 year old, sorry, 98 this spring year old um, historic buildings that um, are probably what the second and third sold houses in the city. And are these complementary in architectural style with our buildings? Are they complementary to the houses across the street surrounding them? And my understanding is no. And from what I've seen, that answer is no. So I think maybe we should be looking at the architectural style. Is this truly cottage? And will it look like a cottage district, which is what this is supposed to be, which is what this started out with years ago on a prior commission? And is it going through this commission and maintaining its integrity? And I would have to say no. And I certainly hope um, that they're putting in adequate buffers and walls around my family's properties so no water comes on our property and we don't have the problems with random assorted people wandering from their properties onto ours because then you well know you're going to have to listen to me on a regular basis and that's a fate worse than death and you do not want to be hearing with, from me on this. So I certainly hope that's all going to be resolved. And um, I certainly hope we have lots and lots and lots of trees and canopy trees, no palms. Thank you very much for your input, but I would love to see some more cottagey style little details showing up on these houses. Thank you. Hey, Sue. Uh, good evening again, Barbara Reedy. I did attend the Pulte um, community input opportunity and, and have already expressed to them Basically, so most of the things that Susan has already said to you um, about um, the, the, the feel of this uh, project, how it feels. I mean, I don't have a problem with, I mean, these are nice sized homes, going to be nicely priced. That is not, um, my, in, my input is, can we make them look a little bit nicer on the face of it, on the facade? Can we have a front porch or a back porch or something that gives a nod to the historic nature that it was supposed to be intended for over there? I mean, changing the facade is minimal. You know, it's not changing the floor print, blueprint of the floor, the, you know, the entire units. It's just not necessary to change the inside. But just a little something nice, special, make it something special, attractive that the, you know, would make people feel like they were living someplace special. Front porches, you've got this beautiful sidewalk all the way around the, the whole contraption. You know, people are gonna be out there walking their dogs and, you know, hey, howdy neighbor, you know, how do you get a neighborhood feel when the front of the building is, is a fortress? You know, you, you've got your door and you've, your garage door and you've got your front door and, you know, I suggested that they put an awning of some sort over the door so you don't get wet when you unlock your front door to get into your fortress. You know, let's make it nice. You know, that's a minimal tweak, really. And as far as forcing everyone to not be able to store things in their own garage, you might check with what the legislature just passed that I just read today. 
there's some kind of an HOA law that's just been passed that HOAs cannot regulate what people store as long as it's out of sight of the street and the next door neighbor. So we might look at that a little bit. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak specifically on this ordinance? Now would be the time to do so. Okay, give me one moment. Uh, my computer just shut off. Let me log on. Let me just make sure that there's nobody online. One second. And I do not see anyone online. With that, public comments on this ordinance is now closed. May I have a motion to approve item 8A? A second. I heard a motion from Commissioner Cruz, a second from Vice Mayor Turkin. Uh, let's turn now to the city clerk for the roll call. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Hay? Yes. Commissioner Cruz? Yes. Vice Mayor Turkin? Yes. Mayor Penserga? Yes. In a roll call vote, the motion passed unanimously. All right, thank you. Um, that concludes that item. We're going to move on to the voting for item 8B. This is the variance request. Um, let's turn now for public comment specifically on this item. Council, can we have public comment on the variance and the master plan simultaneously? Yes. Okay. All right. So if you would like to speak on either of those two items, 8B or C, and now is the time to approach the podium. Okay. So again... We have one person. This is for the variance and the new master plan and new site plan. So I have no problem with the variance. Sorry, Susan Oyer, Boynton Beach. I have no problem with the variance, as Commissioner Kelly explained to me. As long as these people are able to put L2 chargers in their homes, in their garages, yay, go for it. We all watch the same news, hopefully. We all know that in the next year, we're, you're going to have 25% of all cars going electric. We all know that VW has already stopped making gas cars. It's here. It's coming. It's time to prepare. So I have no problem with that. And again, I go back to the architectural style and the warm white lights in the neighborhood and having proper barriers and tr trees, not palm trees, and proper you know, shrubs around. And I would hope maybe they would be recognizing that there will probably be children living there and maybe they want to have you know a butterfly garden I understand there's a swale grass area with nothing overly exciting planned maybe we should may be looking at making that a butterfly garden especially since the black Atala butterfly with the red dot that's so rare actually lives in the downtown and is here around our buildings right here right now and you know this is only two blocks away, three blocks away. So maybe that's something we want to look at. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Seeing no one else in the chambers, in-person public comments is now closed. I also don't see anybody online. With that, public comments on these two items are now closed. Let's go back to item 8B. We may have a motion to approve item 8B. So moved. So Sorry, we have a motion second. from Commissioner Kelly. I heard a second first from Commissioner Hay. Uh, this is not an ordinance, so all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those who oppose say no. The ayes have it. Motion passes unanimously. That was item 8B for the variance request. Now for item 8C, this is for the new master plan and new site plan request. May have a motion to approve item 8C. So move. We have a motion from Commissioner Hayes. Is there a second to this second item? Second with discussion. Yes. Go ahead. Mayor, um, typically <laughs> we have um, kind of a response back from after public comment from the applicant or staff to answer any questions. I didn't know if we wanted to allow the applicant to maybe address some concerns that were brought up with regard to some questions, just so that there's clarification sure. um, to I'm, the public. I, I have no objection to that. I thought it was already addressed. Okay. Um, but let's, let's do that. All right. Mr. Barnes, would you mind addressing some of the comments? And um, Amanda, I'm sorry, were you also about to add something to the conversation? Okay, that's all right. Mr. Barnes. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, basically everything has been addressed. Uh, the butterfly attracting species we have, the dry detention area that's required by your code. Um, there is a landscape buffer on the west side of our property that abuts Miss Hoyer's property uh, with trees every 30 feet on center, not palm trees. Um, there's a six foot wall in that buffer on the west side. Uh, it's not a gated community, so there's no perimeter gate around the entire property. It's, it's a city block, so it is going to be integrated um, 
as a normal city block would, so there's no perimeter gate, but there is a wall in the buffer. Um, and, you know, the architecture, it's, you know, it was what was approved by the CRA previously, um, so it's, it's, been, it's been baked in already, so it is an attractive product. It's a product that Pulte has built all over uh, South Florida. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kelly, was, was that it? Did you have any follow-up questions? Or? Yes, and I, and I think, um, Matthew, I think um, I know there was a mention of um, warm lights, and I know it's in the plans that, we're, that you're using warm LED lights in the... Yeah, I don't... It, we, we went through with the CRA, what the light right. type would be, and it, it meets the CRA right. standard. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mayor? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Temple. The staff would ask that um, it, in, in whoever makes the motion, if we could include the, the modification of the, the conditions three and five as were proposed. Would you like to make the motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion with, um, with the modifications three and five as proposed. Second. All right. With that, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving item 8C, say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. If I'm not mistaken, that may have been the last hurdle. But I don't want to jinx it. I got a thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Affordable homes coming to Boynton Beach. It's a very good Eight. thing. Very good. All right. So we're now moving on to item 8D. This one is for the new major site plan for the warehouse buildings. Um, all right, I see Ms. Miskell is already approaching the podium. I'm sorry, I'm, you didn't read this yet? Okay, go ahead, City Clerk. Approve request for a new major site plan application for 3800 South Congress Avenue to construct two industrial warehouse buildings totaling approximately 457 to 26 square feet and associated site improvements, uh, improvements on 30.72 acre site located at 3800 South Congress Avenue in the M1 Light Industrial Zoning District. All right, thank you so much. Uh, before you begin, Ms. Miskell, I, I wanna remind my colleagues and thank you, Council, the disclosures. Um, let's begin on uh, my right this time. As pertaining to this matter, I have had ex parte communication with Ms. Biscoll and the representative. I, f I apologize, I forgot their name. I have, I have not received written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a side visit. And I have not received, well, besides for city staff, I have not received any other uh, expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. All right, thank you, Vice Mayor. I think we talked about this. Yeah, okay. I have had communication with Ms. Miskell um, pertaining to this matter. I have not, I have received a written communication in the form of a meeting request to this matter. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit. I have not received extra opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, as to this matter, which is item 8D, I have had conversations, ex parte communications with Ms. Bonnie Miskell. I have not received written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit. I have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Commissioner Hay? As to this matter, I have not had ex our communication. I have not received written communication. I have not conducted an investigation, nor have I made a site visit, and I have not received expert opinion. I request that these disclosures and all written communication be made part of the record. Thank you, Commissioner Kelly. Thank you. Um, I had to go way back in my calendar to find where I did. Um, I, as to this matter, I have had ex parte communications with Bonnie Miskell as well as representatives from Foundry Commercial. I have not received written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit. I have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures 
and all written communications be made part of the record. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Council, we, did we cover all the bases? Okay, Ms. Miskell, please begin. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the commission. My name is Bonnie Miskell. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. I have been sworn. And we have a very brief presentation to discuss redevelopment of 3800 South Congress Avenue, so we'll get right to it. Uh, this is a map of the site. Um, it is approximately 30.72 acres. It's shown in, on, in red on the screen. It's south of Golf Road, uh, Southwest 23rd Avenue. It's on the east side of Congress between 95 and Congress. This is a blow up of the site. It previously originally had been developed with a warehouse. The, um, and it is uh, that building will be demolished for the new development. The land use on this is industrial. The zoning is M1 light industrial. The prior use was the Bethesda College of Health Services. And this request is consistent with the land use and the zoning. The site plan approval is for a 457,026 square foot industrial warehouse facility inclusive of two buildings with a central loading court. We're also requesting special reduction for parking for sustainable development to allow 462 parking spaces in lieu of the uh, 915, actually it's 914 point something. Uh, parking space is typically required with a parking contingency plan. And we'll go into the site plan a little bit here quickly. Again, um, the total square footage is 457,026 square feet. The parking is surface parking. It's 462 parking spaces. There are two buildings with an interior loading court in the middle such that the loading and offloading is, has been internalized, hiding that part of the use from the exterior property lines in the street frontage. Uh, building one is 223,000 square feet, 249, and it fronts on Congress. And building two is 233,777 square feet. Both of these buildings are one-story buildings. Uh, quickly going over the site development standards, we exceed the minimum requirements, minimum lot area, 10,000 square feet required. This is 30.72 acres. Minimum frontage, you can have zero. We are at 178 feet, eight inches from the street. Minimum setbacks, the front is 15. The buildings are set back to 309 feet. Rear, which is the east, 10 feet required, 56.8 provided. Side north is 15 feet required and 61 feet, 0.3 inches um, is provided. Uh, the side, which is adjacent to the residential community to the south, um, 30 feet is required. We're th over three times that at 94.4, the buildings are set back. Maximum lot coverage would allow 60% of the site. We're only at 34, so we're far from maxing out this site. Maximum FAR, you could get up, uh, go up to 0.5. We're at 0.33, so we're under the FAR. Uh, maximum, and then maximum height would be 40, this is a one story again, it would be 45 feet, we're just under that at 44, 10 inches. So going through some of the elevations, again, we have two buildings, this, the graphics that are on the screen are for building one, the west side faces the street frontage Congress, and we have really three means of ingress and egress there with um, a center entry um, and then on the north and south ends of the site. And then the lower, the line three building elevation is the north elevation. That is the elevation, the building on the north side of the site that is facing the property line. Again, we have, the designer has done an excellent job of internalizing the loading areas, the less attractive part of the building. So that's what you're looking at here. Um, it's the, um, this is the uh, east building elevation for building one. And then on the south side, this elevation, which is on line three, is the part of the building that faces the southern property line or the residential. Again, attractive building, attractive facade, not what you're seeing in, in the interior part of the site where the loading docks are. The next screen is the building elevations for building two. Same architecture, the buildings are very similar. The, this, facing, this elevation is actually facing east, which is towards 95 and the railroad tracks. And line three is also the southern elevation, which faces the southern property line. And again, similar to what you just saw, 
the interior elevations facing the interior court, and on the lower line, this is the really the outer elevation on the north side facing the north property line. And these are just some renderings that we, we provided for you so you can get a sense of what the exterior of the building does look like, and this is at the central entry point. And this is the east facade, somewhat similar, almost mirroring the other building. And then the next one, this is the southeast corner, which is on the southern side. And you'll notice that we have a type two buffer here because we are adjacent to residential. It is a, a more meaningful buffer and it does require a wall. And that's what you're looking at on the left side of the um, page. Recommendation of approval with conditions. We have no objections to any of the conditions. They're all acceptable to my client. And we're happy to an answer any questions that you may have. Most of this side of the room are our team, so if you have any questions, I think we can cover them. And thank you very much for your patience. Thank you so much, Ms. Miskell. Uh, let me turn now to staff if they have anything to, to add. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. My name is Craig Bender, Senior Planner uh, with the City. Staff is in support of the application. Our presentation is very duplicative of the applicant's presentation. Um, sat once the applicant satisfies all conditions of approval, we are supportive of approving it. All right, and there's no amendments to the conditions of approval? No amendments tonight, okay. thank you. All right, um, if anybody have any questions for either party now, let's, uh, Commissioner Cruz, I saw your hand up. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I do have a question. Um, have we had meetings with the nearby or adjacent neighborhoods? I know we have like the Mon Monterey, I think it's called Monterey um, neighborhood slightly south. Um, I would like to, if if possible, I would like to request, and I would be happy to be present at that meeting. Uh, but I did hear somebody make public comment earlier regarding this. I am in support of the project, but I do want to have an opportunity to give the neighbors in both sides of the project an opportunity to address their concerns. Um, and then my second question, can we agree on that? I'm not clear on the question, but we're happy to approach them if we can while we're in the permitting phase of it. This is fully compliant and we'll be happy to do that and we'll coordinate through your office. Okay, thank you so much. And then um, my second question would be, what would the hours of operation be for this facility? I guess it depends on the tenant. Hi, uh, David Blunt with Foundry Commercial. Uh, so the hours of operations would be dependent on the tenants within the facility. Um, typical operations are normal business hours, but until we have tenants in the building, we don't know exactly. The reason I'm asking is because we do have residential um, neighborhoods on both sides of the property, and because I do represent them, that is my district, I wanted to make sure that whatever hours we had were reasonable with, you know, the Nearby they'd neighborhoods. be reasonable and they'd have to comply with any city regulations and code. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner Cruz. Vice Mayor, did you have any questions for either party? No, I don't. Uh, I think Commissioner Cruz brought up the public input. I think that's important, so I don't want to support that and uh, sooner than later. So but I don't have any questions, thanks. All right, thank you. Commissioner Hay? I'm good. All right, Commissioner Kelly? No, I don't, um, well, I say I don't have any questions, but, um, and I don't necessarily have any questions, but I agree with um, with Commissioner Cruz. My only question, I guess, would be, I, from what it looks like and my recollection of the, of the site, they're way closer to that neighborhood than what you're proposing in your new plan. And so I just, I know that there was some question I, from a, a resident, and I'm I'm assuming that that's just questions because they don't really have, you know, the information. And I wish she would have stayed, but um, to be able to see it. But um, um, my understanding, of looking at the site, is that it's actually quite closer to the neighborhood than what you're proposing. Um, actually, the dimensions we gave you are accurate. So we, our building is set back more than three times the, the requirement, and we do have a type two buffer. Um, we also have looked at 
and been out to the site. They have heavy vegetation on their side of the line. We too are intending to heavy landscaping on our side so that they will have a solid screen. And there is a solid screen there today without our landscaping because this was developed many, many years ago. But we will meet with them before we get into permitting so that there'll be no surprises. And I do believe they were noticed. That's correct, because I think it's within 400 feet. So everyone from that community that is within that, which I would suspect would be most of the community, did receive direct notice. And then along the north end, that's all industrial already, correct? There's no residential? It's yeah, all there's industrial. no residential there, no. Okay, so it's yeah. it's Lake Monterey that, or Monterey that that's correct. is our correct. And that, I okay. believe that's where that lady was from. Sorry, if I may, um, during the site plan review process, we did ask the applicant to provide um, additional trees, and they are spacing them closer. They're typically spaced between 20 to 30 feet. They are going with the 20 feet, and they are providing understory trees as well. So that south buffer will be really good for the um, that neighborhood. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see there's a follow-up question, Vice Mayor. Yeah. What? How many? Uh, what's the amount of spaces for the tenants in this project? So we have 462 spaces total, okay. um, and we provided a parking plan. We're applying the sustainable parking provisions within the code, so we do meet those requirements, um, but we will have a plan as well, should we, and potentially limitations on leases if we ever did have a parking issue. Okay, and, and, and I don't see in front of me on the, on the site map here, but it, I would assume that there, if there is a need for semi-trucks to get in there, the ability. Oh, we, we meet all the minimum okay. radius requirements, yes. Okay, all right, just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right, thank you. If there's nothing else from the uh, commissioner? Yes, sorry. Um, okay. Just wanted to add again, I am in support of this project. Thank you for bringing it up. It's really, I'm glad to see this happening in my district um, and potentially bring in more businesses to the city. Um, at the same time, I do want to make sure that we are able to meet with um, the neighborhood and to please invite me personally. I would like to be there. Um, and I will, if I can make a motion to approve. I'm Let's do public comment. Oh. So, and I'd be happy to hear your motion. All right. So if you would like to speak specifically on item 8D, now would be the time to approach the podium. I'm also monitoring uh, those online. and I don't see anyone online. Okay, I see no one approaching the podium. With that, uh, public comment on item 8D is now closed. Um, does anybody, just for formality's sake, I'll ask staff and the applicant anything you want to add or follow up. Okay, with that, uh, let's go to the motion, Commissioner Cruz. To approve. We have okay. a motion. And the second, uh, was that Commissioner Kelly? Um, all right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion to approve item 8D, say aye. 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 All those who oppose, say no. The ayes have it. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. So that concludes all of public hearing. So now we're moving on to the next portion of the agenda, which is legal. This is proposed ordinance 24-002. It's first reading. In fact, all the items in this category is first reading, which means there will be no public comment. We will have public comment on second reading. Let me turn to council and city clerk. Either one, yeah. Proposed ordinance number 24-002, first reading, an ordinance of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida, repealing sections 2-5, 2-6 and 2-7 of the City Code of Ordinances, creating a new article in Chapter 2, Administration Article 6, entitled City Attorney, providing for codification, severability, conflicts, and providing for an effective date. And I see here that it, it was tabled, so we should have a motion to untable the item first. So moved. Motion to we untable. have a motion to un <laughs> remove from the table, I should say. Commissioner Kelly, a second from Commissioner Cruz. All those in favor of removing the item from the table say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Motion passes unanimously. The item is removed from the table. All right, so we've read the item into the record. Is there anything from staff? Would they like to present on this item? Um, I, I believe I've gone over it with everyone. Okay. I don't know if we need a formal presentation, no, but no, essentially what this sure does. I give you the opportunity. Uh, what this does is it, it codifies the responsibilities of the city attorney's office um, a little bit in more detail than what is provided in the charter. And it also allows um, settlements 
up to $50,000 upon the approval of the city attorney and the city manager. Uh, we both have to agree. And then likewise, um, it does provide for the commission's ability to appoint special counsel. All right, thank you. Are there any questions or comments about this item to our legal counsel here? Nothing from my left, anything from my right, Vice Mayor? For the uh, settlement, th so up to $50,000. Right, right. Correct. For But both the city manager and the city attorney would need to agree. Correct. Okay, we so, have to concur. Okay. And without that, there would be no settlement. That's Well, it would have to go before the city commission if we right. don't agree for okay. your approval. Okay. That, that answer my next question. Thank you, man. All right. Thank you. Anything else? With that, this is only first reading. I just want to remind everybody of that. Um, we have a motion to approve. So move. We have a motion. Okay. And we have a second from Commissioner Hay. City Clerk. Commissioner Kelly. Yes. Commissioner Hay. Yes. Commissioner Cruz. Yes. Vice Mayor Turkin. Yes. Mayor Pensarga. Yes. In a roll call vote, the motion passing unanimously. All right. Thank you. Moving on to item 12B. City Clerk. One second. Okay. Proposed, proposed ordinance 24-003, first reading, an ordinance of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida, amending chapter two, administration, article four, entitled purchasing and consultants, section 2-56C is hereby amended to amend the process to dispose of city-owned pro real property and providing for conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. All right, thank you. Any questions from my colleagues here on this item? Questions or comments? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve item 12B. So move. I heard a motion from Commissioner Hayes. There is a second. Second. A uh, second from Commissioner Cruz. All the, uh, City Clerk, please begin the roll call. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Hay? Yes. Commissioner Cruz? Yes. Vice Mayor Turkin? Yes. Mayor Penserga? Yes. In a roll call vote, the motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Item 12C, also first reading. Proposed ordinance number 24-004, first reading, an ordinance of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida, amending chapter 2.5, alarm systems to clarify fire department fees for responding to excessive fire alarms, providing for a repeal of laws and conflict, severability, codification, and an effective date. Thank you. Anything from my colleagues? Any remaining questions for staff? Can you, yes, Commissioner? Just for the purpose of the public can you just explain what the change of this ordinance is for please um essentially there's no change um but there was a little miscommun not a miscommunication but it wasn't clear in my opinion in, in consulting with the uh with the fire department relating to the fire department's ability to impose fines for excessive fire alarm fees. Um, the commission did previously approve those fire alarm fines and that resolution uh, was done in 2022 and that's on, on file with the clerk. So this merely just um, codifies that clearly in the law under the um, police department fees. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else? With that, we have a motion to approve item 12C. So moved. We have a motion from second. Commissioner Cruz, a second from Commissioner Hay. City Clerk, please begin. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Hay? Yes. Commissioner Cruz? Yes. Vice Mayor Turkin? Yes. Mayor Pensarga? Yes. In a roll call vote, the motion passed unanimously. Thank you. We're moving on to item 12D. Proposed ordinance number 24-005, first reading an ordinance of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida, amending chapter nine, fire protection and prevention, section nine dash one, Boynton Beach fire code, fire codes adopted uh, to update the city code as required by Florida statute when a new edition of the Florida fire Preve prevention code has been adopted, providing for repeal of conflicts and providing for repeal of laws and conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. All right, thank you. Anyone from the dais? Questions, just, comments? If, just if, a brief yes, summary. If you could yes. just explain uh, what, what we're... Sure, no problem. For the record. So thank Florida you. statutes, um, every year the legislature, the state legislature, not, I'm sorry, not every year, every few years the state, state legislature um, 
comes out with the new Florida Fire Prevention Code and by statute or by ordinance, we have to adopt that. We have adopted that. Um, this changes the language of the ordinance so that not only are we adopting 2023, but we will not have to come back. It, it applies to all future amendments and updates by the legislature will automatically be adopted by our code under that statute. All right, thank you. So it'll just be applicable to whatever all, year correct. and then it won't have all to All amendments come back to us. and they occasionally they put out additional um, updates mm -hmm. and this will apply to all of those. Okay. So we won't have to keep coming back every time there's a change. Okay. I can see the thought I mean, at the well, end. Well, I mean, yeah. I understand the, the, the reason behind making things smoother. Mm -hmm. But I guess then how would we know if there oh, was a change? I'm sorry. The, that we would need to know on the a The ordinance does require that we keep a copy of it. Um, with the clerk, a copy of it with the clerk. So whenever there is an update, um, the fire marshal will bring the clerk a new copy and, and that will happen. That's required as part of the code. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is, is there anything else on this item? All right. With that, we have a motion to, to approve. approve. Okay. It's just 12D. Motion from Commissioner Cruz, second from Vice Mayor. Go ahead, Maley. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Hay? Yes. Commissioner Cruz? Yes. Vice Mayor Turkin? Yes. Mayor Penserga? <clears throat> yes. In a roll call vote, the motion passed unanimously. All right, thank you. Again, all of these items were first reading. On second reading, we will have public comment and that will finalize uh, the voting, okay? All right, so this concludes all the items currently on the agenda, but as always, I wanna provide everybody an opportunity for closing comments, all right? And we'll conclude the evening. Go ahead, Commissioner Kelly. My only um, comment is just, I wanna make sure that, st I know we, at the very beginning of the meeting, we talked about adding some stuff on future mm -hmm. agenda mm -hmm. with regard to CIP and everything I want to. Let me, um, one second, Commissioner, I just wanna reiterate, just make sure we have it correctly. Mm -hmm. I heard CIP discussion, road paving discussion, I think that was you, Vice Mayor, the hotel site discussion. I heard that that will be coming up on the second meeting of March, and did I miss anything else? No, I think that's and That it. was it? Yeah, okay. I just wanna make sure they end up okay. on the um, future agenda items. Okay, please. well, that's for them to make sure. I'm sorry, uh, we'll add the um, request by uh, Commissioner Kelly to 13C, which was requested by Commissioner Cruz, we'll add that in addition to, because that's pretty much set to go. Um, and it, it's not gonna be a big deal just to add the requested information, so. And Commissioner Kelly, I just wanna make sure, and City Manager, both of you communicate so the expectation is clear for what it is that you're gonna be adding. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's important. Okay. And then we'll uh, we'll add a discussion item uh, a discussion item in reference to funding for additional paving. Okay. Sounds good. Commissioner, was there anything else you want closing comments? No, thank you. All right, Commissioner Hay. No, the only comment I have is that a question for staff. Uh, when do you feel you you'll be ready to give us another update on annexation. Hmm. I would have to um, confer, and I know Adam's about to say the same thing, I'd have to confer with uh, Amanda. I know those feasibility studies are probably another few months away. Initially, she said it was probably be between three to six months. Um, I know the, the five largest departments, which is public safety, uh, public works, utilities, and also, well, utilities probably is already servicing those residents, so that shouldn't be too too uh, too much, but I will say parks and rec also. Those will be the, the largest departments that we'll have to wait on. So I'm assuming between three to six months. Okay. So we're looking at summertime. Right. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have a, several things to <laughs> discuss. But like I mentioned earlier, I'll sit down with both of you first before I bring it up. 
um, and some exciting things that we should be adding to the agenda for a future meeting, but we'll circle back to that. Uh, go, go ahead, Vice Mayor. Closing nope. comments. Com Commissioner Kelly uh, stole my thunder. Just want to make sure all those all those items got added yeah. and yeah. they weren't missed. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. And Commissioner Cruz. All right. Have a good night. May have a motion to adjourn. We'll move. Second. Second. And we have a second. All those in favor of the motion to adjourn, say aye. 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 Have a good night, everyone. Thank you for your patience and for staying this late.